make trips. Hey guys, I'm Sai, and welcome to Ace Podcast Nation, the home of the Andy Campbell Football Show. This is episode number 90. The show is available live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And uh, of course, Ace, Co- Ace Podcast Nation, you're home to many other great shows and series, including uh, our popular mental health and sports show every Sunday. We feature top guests, expert analysts, and more. So uh, please give us a follow on social media for more information on uh, upcoming shows, series, and guests. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's the most direct way to support the channel. Uh, it's free. Click that bell for notifications every time we upload or go live. And uh, you can get the audio versions at all the usual places and podcast platforms. And, of course, if you just want to streamline your Ace Podcast Nation experience for football, you can follow at AC Footy Show at all the usual uh, pod, uh, usual social media places, sorry. And uh, okay, so just as we wait for the the uh, the various platforms and live chats to fill up, which uh, they are already doing. So um, a big shout out to uh, Black Diamond Sports for all their help and support with the show and the channel. Black Diamond Sports is a global sports agency which uh, represents sports stars from around the world. For more information, you can visit their social media pages or indeed their website, the links to which are in the description. And they'll also uh, intermittently flash up on the screen during the show. Uh, Our sponsor for today, as ever, for the Andy Campbell shows is uh, Bespoke Financial and uh, especially Darren Ralston. So uh, here's just a quick word from them. My mummy and daddy have been talking about life insurance. It sounds like something to protect my brother and me, but I don't really understand. Then my Auntie Louise told Mummy about Bespoke Financial People. She said there are local companies who helped her with her life insurance. Mummy got in touch and because they're based locally, a man called Darren was able to come to our house. He was really friendly. Darren stayed for a cup of tea and made it all really easy to understand. He said that life insurance will protect our home and family if anything bad were to happen. Like if Mummy or Daddy got sick, then we'd get enough money to take care of us and our house would be paid for so we wouldn't get taken away. After an hour, Darren said goodbye and Mummy and Daddy seemed a lot happier. Once it was all sorted, we could all relax and watch a film together as a family. I don't know why they didn't do it sooner. Bespoke Financial uh, specialise in life insurance, critical illness, income protection, mortgages and sports cover. Darren Ralston of Bespoke Financial uh, is giving away a free will with £140 with any new policy that's taken out at the moment. So uh, please check him out on social media. Uh, if you contact myself or Andy, we'll give you uh, his number or his contact details. It's an amazing offer, so please don't miss out. And uh, just check him out. Andy's been using them for various policies over the years, and uh, I'm sure that he'll tell you just how good they are. But they are, you know, it's not just... a uh, and I had spiel. They are like truly top of their field. They, and they provide an award-winning service. We are very proud to partner with such a brand. Uh, so check them out. But uh, introduce. Speaking of the man, the goal collector, the fox in the box. He is still the king of the Millennium Stadium. My co-host, ex Cardiff City and Middlesbrough striker, and David Jones's favourite son is Mr. Andy Campbell. How are you, buddy? <laughs> I'm good, mate. Yeah, this is uh, this is a, a special one. This is personal this year. It's uh, personal in a good way. Um, good friend of mine, uh, someone who's looked after me uh, a little bit, which I'll go into a little bit later on. But yeah, no, super excited. Uh, really good. Uh, really can't wait for it. I've, I've I've had a little quick quick look at the group uh, the group chat and seen some of the comments, some of the um, some of the comments already. So I can just feel this is going to be an amazing show. Really excited. Uh, before we do start, though, Sai, I would like to. Um, uh, wish one of my fellow directors of Black Diamond Sports, Nick Greatrex, a happy birthday today. Nick's in Spain, so um, I know he's a, he's a keen follower of the show uh, since he joined the company. I know all the guys from Black Diamond watch it, so uh, just a big happy birthday to Nick from uh, from everybody from tonight. Indeed, happy birthday, Nick. Um, and of course, tonight's guest, a legend, a cult hero, former Rotherham United, Doncaster Rovers, and of course, the mighty Cardiff City it is Mr. Leo Fortune West. How are you, Leo? And yeah, welcome. hello, sir. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. I'm well. Keeping well. Good man. 
Great to have you on, Leo. It's absolutely, absolutely. It's been a pleasure. You know, I, I, I've, yeah. I've been like a stalk. I've been like a stalker to you, bless you. You know what I mean? I've, I've tried to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I tried to get, I tried to get you on. But hey, listen, I always get there in the end, mate. You know that. You know that. You do. No worries, mate. It's a pleasure. <laughs> We're gonna have um, we're gonna have loads of questions today. Uh, I can see them all flooding in already. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get straight in to the magnificent seven, and uh, then we'll get going. So uh, let's go. Leo Fortune West, the magnificent seven. Okay, uh, Messi or Ronaldo? Ronaldo. Why? Yeah, you can if you want, you crack on. Uh, for me, Ronaldo's done it in several countries and for his country. Top man. I, I, I'm, on that, I'm on that boat as well, Ronaldo. Uh, Favourite TV show? Uh, it used to be The West Wing. Oh, that's a good show. Uh, very different, very different. Yeah, we get some, we well, get some very different answers, don't we? Which is great. Cracking answers. Uh, Favourite manager to play for? Good, good question. Good question. Yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed all my managers. Um, I think Ronnie Moore stands out because he was quite a good man manager. I think at the time, the team kind of rarely had, we had a captain in every department and things just kind of went kind of swimming the well, really. He's a good character as well, Leo, though, isn't he? He's a, he's a really good yeah, character. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, yeah. I, 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 say I don't know him personally, but I've spoken to him a couple of times. I follow him on Twitter and... He's very opinionated, and I like that about people. You know, he's done he's, he's done yeah. a good job wherever he's been as well. So yeah. I like that. Course. I mean, he's very managerial. Yeah, you can you you have easily have a drink with him in a bar as well, and feel relaxed in his presence. And uh, with an example, angriest teammate. <sighs> Do I have to? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's, it's not really hard to be fair. I mean, at Cardiff, we had a, a guy called um, Willie Bolin. Um, yeah. and, and I, I will say I mean I, I, I love him to bits um, but with me I was quite belligerent when I played um, but I love my teammates uh, I wouldn't think of harming them at all in training I'll save that <laughs> I'll save that for the opposition uh, on a Saturday uh, Willie was quite the, quite the opposite really he would, he would stomp around being very angry uh, and on training <laughs> So without shadow that Willie Bowling. He's a, a <laughs> sorry, big, sorry, Willie. big friend of the of the channel. Obviously, uh, Willie got myself and my wife together, which I've told that story a million times. And I obviously played with both you guys. Uh, I know you know him both well, so I say that's good yeah. to get I'm, I'm really happy with that. That's almost I'm more as happy with that as I was to get Leo on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true though, you know what I mean? Like there's um, Willie's like a Willie's like a bear with a sore head at times. You know, you, you, you can always you can always tell you can you can always tell the minute he walked through that door if he was gonna if he was in a good mood or a bad mood. Just you know what I mean. So you knew what kind of if you were gonna get shouted at in training. You know what I mean. Sometimes Willie was one of those guys, Leo, wasn't he? That that sometimes yeah. you you wanted on your five a side team because you wanted to win, or you didn't yeah. want him on your five a side team because you wanted an easy afternoon or an easy morning or you know a quiet a quiet yeah. day. If you had a if you had a yeah. headache, you didn't want Willie mm. on the team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I met him a few years later. A few years later, at Doncaster Rovers, we were doing um, a level three uh, coaching course, and he hadn't changed at all. He just came in, you know, as you said, bad mood. Um, but you know, that's him. That's him. You love him, that you really. Uh, favorite strike partner. Oh, interesting one. Right. Uh, I mean, I was at Robin with Paul Warren, um, and it, it, it worked out. It was very balanced with Paul Warren. Um, uh, you know, we done well for, for, for the two years that I was there. Uh, we just kind of really got on and gelled. Uh, I mean, that said, I've had lots of good partners, um, but I think probably looking at all the clubs uh, individually, probably my relationship with Paul Warren was, was quite smooth. Uh, you know, Andy was great. Ernie was great. Uh, Adi Akinbayi was great. Um, Dennis Bailey was great. You know, they, these were all very good forwards. Um, but I suppose, you know, it was, it was very smooth between me and Warney. Good player as well. Though. Nice, nice yeah. fella as well. Really, yeah. really nice fella. Down to earth fella, yeah. Yeah, yeah really was. nice man, yeah. Uh, and then last couple, we've got uh, Lenny Lawrence or Alan Cork. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. 
I mean, you know, I, I really did like Alan Cork. You know, if I'm honest, as a player with managers, if they play you, you like them. <laughs> if you don't play you, you don't like them. Um, you know, I played, you know, quite a few games under, under Lenny and Alan. I think Alan's quite is quite charming in, in his whole kind of personality and presence. Um, and, and unfortunately, at the time when he was in charge, there was a bit of a dip in performance, which ultimately led to him kind of leaving. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's a difficult one. I mean, Lenny's, Lenny's quite different anyway. Um, but I think probably, you know, you get a bit more, um, especially as a forward as well, uh, from Alan Cork. Well, I was I was obviously very disappointed, Leo Card. I don't I don't know if I ever told you the story, but obviously I was supposed to sign um, after the Leeds game. Um, I was supposed to sign the following week, uh, and obviously he went to Wigan Athletic the following week. Got beat four 0 I think, and Corky lost his job on the way home, more or less. And then Lenny, Lenny took over. So I'd already pre spoke to the club. I spoke to spoke to Corky, um, and I was really excited. And then when he lost his job on that Saturday night, I'd I, I'd had a um, a conversation with a with Cav, conversation with another couple of players, just thinking, oh God, that was, that was my luck. You know, I was yeah, desperate yeah. to get out of Middlesbrough, desperate to try something new, and then all of a sudden, you're left in limbo. Uh, and then obviously Lenny mm. Lawrence comes in and takes over from director of football, wherever he was, his, his role at the time, which yeah. you know, suited me because obviously I knew Lenny. But no, Corky was a lovely fellow. Mm. I was so disappointed because I, I was I was excited to, to work under him because I, I did really good things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I say it's always a shame, you know, from a, a playing perspective is that, you know, it, it, whenever a manager does go, you, you look at the player, the, the players, we've kind of let him down collectively. And, and you know, ironically, the, the, the club had a bit of an upsurge uh, after me. We, we went on like, maybe like a 15 game unbeaten run. So it's all very difficult. But yeah, I mean, I did really like Alan Cork. Yeah, good answer. So, um, Okay, so the last final question of the Magnificent Seven is, who is the greatest Englishman who has ever lived? Uh, it doesn't have to be football-related. Oh, that's the question, isn't it? Uh, that's the question. Um, what, what I would say, what I would say, um, not sure, not uh, probably someone the likes of Keir Hardy, Someone who created the, the, the social welfare system, um, oh, somebody, somebody uh, like that um, yeah. for me, kind of you know, provided that safety net for people who you know perhaps you know uh, couldn't really manage uh, without the help and support. And obviously, you know, look at us now in terms of being an advanced country, and look at the NHS and how we look after people who can't look after themselves really. What a phenomenal show. We've had so many know. different answers yeah. to that question because it is such a, you know, it's such a broad question and it really is it's a bit mean to do it in a quick fire question section, but I like it because everybody, everybody gives a different answer except the Northern Irish players and people because they always say George Best. Apart from that, we've had different answers every go. But um, yeah. that was a phenomenal answer. Phenomenal. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. So, and shall we get the any other business out of the way? Push under the carpet. And concentrate yeah. on the man of the hour and yeah. uh, get to all these questions then, can't we? So uh, I'll, I'll let you take it away to start and then uh, we can we can chip in with it. Yeah, well, I, I just want to discuss, um, I think it's a bit of a shambles, to be honest. The manager merry go around. You know, Leo's just spoke there about, about managers he's played under and Corky losing his job and someone else taking over. And for me... It used to happen quite a lot uh, in the 90s and, 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 and probably the early 2000s, and it's still happening now, and, but it's happening more often now. Uh, you know what I mean? You're, you're not safe after being unbeaten. You know what I mean? Graham Alexander lost his job at Salford. Um, they brought in, for me, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not happy with this, by the way, because they brought in Swindon Towns manager, Richie Wellens, ex-Man United player, so he's, he's within the, the class of 92, the system. Yeah. Um, I just feel really sorry for people who lose a job because... Um, if yeah. you're if you're bottom of the league and you lose your job because you're not very good, I fully understand it. But if you've mm. if if you, it can it can harness it harness re reputation. Do you know what I mean? Graham mm. Alexander, very good manager, nice fella. Mm. You know what I mean? And and I hope he he gets another or better job out of it and mm. and progress up the up the up the football yeah. pyramid because. I don't like it. I just don't like it. You know, in Tony Poole yeah. getting a new job, John Sheridan getting a new job, um, Gary Monk losing his job. It's 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 never ending, you know. And I, I just yeah. I just feel as I just feel as though managers should be a little bit like players, Leo, for me. That if you sign a contract, you should get yeah. a window. You should get 
the end of the season, you know what I mean? Because relegation is part mm. of football. Players don't get yeah. sacked if you get relegated. Players get released and players get sold. So yeah. why is it my here's mind a, different? Here's a question yeah. for both for both of you guys. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Should they bring in a like a like a managerial window similar to a transfer window whereby clubs cannot sack or change managers for that certain period? So for instance, uh the same as the transfer window. So they have to keep their manager now till January. And then if they want to make a change, they can make a change in January. Once that window is closed, they've got to keep the manager till the end of the year. Because it does feel a bit ridiculous in terms of some of the short... We've had some really short stints in management over the last you know 10 years. There's been some ridiculous ones. Um, mm -hmm. John Sheridan's gone from Wigan to Swindon. Like, they're direct rivals. I feel like that's going to have a massive implications for, for Wigan and Swindon, whether good or bad, it's going to have a big implication on their season. Um, so John Sheridan has had 15 clubs in 11 years as a manager. Players. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I want his we agent's, num ways, I want his agent's number. I want his agent's number. Mm -hmm. He's obviously done a very good job. I, yeah, listen, yeah. And joking aside, it, it can work both ways, yeah, but if you're, if you, if you're doing well and you're stabilising the club and then you jump ship, it's it's hard because those players you've you've been working under. I feel sorry for them. I feel mm -hmm. sorry for the supporters who bought into your philosophy, bought yeah. into the way that you, you're pushing the club. You know that I like mm -hmm. stabilisation. I like the way that true football clubs are run. You know, I, I, yeah. I look at I look I look at Leo's old club, Rotherham. You know, what I mean, we focus on the championship on a Friday, Rotherham. You know, what I mean, the Coventry cities. These sides now look really stabilised. They look like they're enjoying, even though they're not really doing very well. You know what I mean? They're, they're finding yeah. it tough in, in a really tough league, but they're, they're sticking by people and rightly so because it's football's not easy. Football's not easy. It's difficult. You know what I mean? You're not going to win every week. You know what I mean? Even yeah. in the League One, you're not going to win every week. So for me, just yeah. just have to be fair a little bit. I, mean, I suppose I suppose with the Robin example it is that obviously Paul Bourne is a player of, of 10, 10 years. So he's kind of really ingrained in the club and obviously the supporters have, have kind of gone on board. The, the issue is, if he leaves, who else is there? Because if there's no one else who's got the same time spent at a club like Paul Warren to move up, you're having to bring someone in from, from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of managers, I mean, I suppose if you put managers on short-term con you know, on, on short contracts, they should stay the duration, and that will kind of uh, avoid the kind of knock-on effect whereby if this manager leaves, uh, creates a job elsewhere, and then someone wants to, mm -hmm. to buy to get that job. Um, but I suppose ultimately, you know, with, with managers losing their jobs, I think people are, are more impatient. Fans are more impatient. And I think, you know, it's all about now identity and style of football. And I think it's very easy to, to go from wanting to be attractive to wanting to get good results. And sometimes the, the two don't tie in with each other. And I just what's think more, what's more really important, Leo? What's more, what's more important than out there, too? Well... Well, I mean, if you're a club like, let's say, Sheffield United, then it's not really how you play. If you can stay in that league, because really they're not gonna they're not gonna push really for for, for, the, for the top half. If you can stay in that league, then you've done well. Um, you look at you look at the Championship, when I look at and, and really Rotherham, and even Doncaster to a degree, but not Cardiff. A lot of the teams in the Championship, they're they're big cities, so mm -hmm. so they get. 15, 20,000 fans on a bad day. The likes of Doncaster get, you know, 7,000, you know, a, a Rotherham, 8,000. That's not enough to sustain a league, to sustain a team in that league long term. Mm. So you are going to dip down and, and probably League One is, is your level. Yeah, no, I, 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 I totally agree. Yeah. I, I, I think um, we've got some great questions in the, in the, in the group chat. Matty Emery, uh, Sai, is my over 40s manager. Um, and he's put an interesting one on there. The last question there, if you can stick it on. So, uh, what's he saying? He's saying, how can you manage well with one team but another? You know what I mean? The answer to that is, um, and he's put an earlier comment on about about it's having, about having a good group of lads. You know what I mean? Leo's been quite lucky in his time, same as I have. You know what I mean? I've been in some really good dressing rooms. You know what I mean? Some absolutely amazing dressing rooms where the manager doesn't really do a lot, apart from a weekend, where the training's done by a coach and the, the players manage themselves and manage each other. If that's captains, like Leo said, all over the place, like with Ronnie Moore. Um, and yeah. then on the Saturday, it's just about managing that 2 p.m. till 3 p.m., that 3.45 yeah. at half time, and then making substitutions mm -hmm. during a game. And that, for me, is a, yeah. a sign of a top, top manager who doesn't have to do a lot, but gets yeah. the ultimate respect yeah. by the whole group yeah. and the whole club. 
So, well, so I, I think there's other issues. Yeah, I mean, for one, you look at John Sheridan, right? So let's say tomorrow he goes to Man City. How well will he do? He um, finished top how, four. He should. He should do with the players he's yeah, got. He but, will do. He will do. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. If Pep goes to Oldham, how well would they do? Rubbish. Mm. It's, a know, player, it's, yeah. it's, it's resources. Yeah. So, what makes a good manager? Good players, invariably. And yeah, you can motivate players and get them going for a bit. But ultimately, if the quality is not there, at some point, you know, they, they will dip. And it's yeah. I totally agree. I totally agree. And that's, and that's, and that's progressing things on, though, side, isn't it? It's progression. Yeah. You know, you, you, look, at, you look at Man City. For me, uh, Leo's just mentioned Pep. You know, what I mean, Pep took Man City to the very top. You know, what I mean, How, why hasn't he progressed them on even further? Because he's been overtaken by people who spent more money. He's been overtaken by people who've got better players. You know, what I mean, in order for Man City to go to that next level, they've got to go and bring the best players in, and that's that would have been Messi, that would have been whoever. You know, what I mean, it's it's and these windows are they're amazing because. Because the best players get to move around the country and play for the best teams, which is great. But you know, what I mean, in order for Man City to be classed as one of the true greats, they've got to win the Champions League. Yeah, Pep's, a, Pep's a true great. He's a true great manager because he's won the Champions yeah. League, he's won the Liga, he's won the he's won the, the Premier League. Um, mm. But Man City aren't because of that because of that factor. And so, on. Um, so John John Wish sent me a. a a question before the show and alongside it was a tweet uh, it came from uh, the second tier podcast and they put a tweet out uh, over the last couple of days it says today marks a year since Neil Harris took charge of Cardiff in that team only one championship side has lost fewer games only two sides have won more games only three teams have scored more goals and only four teams have conceded fewer goals but so those stats on paper they look like he's doing a very, very good job. However, we've been talking on the championship show uh, with people in the live chat, a lot of Cardiff fans. He's under pressure from, or at least you would think he would be, from the the fans not happy with the way he's, you know, the way the team is playing, the style of football, whatever you want to say, the results, the team selection. There's various little things, and I think it, what it does show is stats can lie, but the league table doesn't. And I know we've said that a lot. Uh, and in Jess, for about obviously, uh, I think it was Jonathan Woodgate last year with yep. the league table lying. The league table doesn't lie, but yep. I'd be interested on you know you two with your take on that because those stats uh, and those achievements they look pretty good. My, my my point with Neil Harris and Cardiff City, you know, I mean, this isn't personal, by the way. I'm I, I, ex teammate, you know what I mean. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stand here at well, City and and, and, and slate him. My issue with Neil and and his side's performance is late is that he's letting too many goals in and the goals are making them score more goals. So they're the, they're the third highest goal, goal scorers in the year because they're 2-0 down and they have to go and score two three goals to win a game. That shouldn't happen. One goal is enough to win a football match sometimes. And if they get the defence right and they did what Neil Warnock did and they had um, Neil Etheridge in goal and kept, what, 22 clean sheets in the season they got promoted, that for me is the way to get out of the championship is by scoring regular goals, by being solid, being hard-working, um, being uh, regimental in terms of your shape and the way you do things. And for me, it just sometimes it looks all over the place, you know what I mean? And I'll refer back to the QPR game. I'm not going to make, make a song and dance out of it, but mm. QPR absolutely walloped Cardiff for about an hour. And then Cardiff got back in the game and Cardiff should have just shut up the shop and took the point. And they didn't mm. because they tried to go gung-ho, tried to go and get the three points. Well, how many times do you need to get, get back in the game? You only need to do it once. You only need to win the game once, so to speak. So they got back in the game. They go and lose it. And the manager looks stupid because he's, his tactics. You know what I mean? So for me, it's just, I don't know. Yeah, listen, I want him to do well. I want him to do well more than anybody. But at the same time, I'll, I'll be honest with my judgment on what I see. And what I see at the minute is, is, is not for me. So is he doing a good job in your opinion, Anne? Sorry, yes or no? No. <clears throat> okay. Um. Leo, what's your view on the way stats can obviously sometimes give a false impression? Of yeah, I mean, stats can tell a story, any story that you want it to tell. Now, the example of a famous uh, England rugby union player, um, whenever the ball went dead, uh, injury, ball at play, he'll do some sprints. And the physio from the side is watching him and saying, oh, you know, is, is he injured? Has he got a knock? So whenever the ball went out of play, he'll do his sprints, do his sprints, do his sprints. And then when he was asked, his reply was, look at my stats. Mm. So it's very easy to kind of to, to skew the results you're reading. Mm. Uh, 
in terms of Cardiff, I mean, you know, you, you've had two two years in in the Premiership, you know, each time. Um, the difficulty is the way they're playing now, as as a very good Championship team, is that if if you go up in that team, you've got to really change the way you play football completely to manage, and that's that's quite a big transition. The trouble with a lot of teams when they do go up uh, is it's loyalty to the players who've got them there. Now, ultimately, it is such a big uh, jump, uh, such a big gulf to, to manage. By the time you realise you need to change it, it's too late. So, rarely, with, with New Harris, and I, you know, I've not seen many of the games uh, this season, but you've got to have a team that really is, is, is fizzing so well in the Championship that you can just put them in the Premiership and they can actually manage. Yeah, it's um, stats. I, I'm not a big fan of stats myself. Yeah. Um, I, I, I agree, to, sir. You, to, to watch they can, before they can, they can, and, they can lie. Things. You, they can lie, sir. You know what I mean? For me, I, I, what you can't, what you can't hide behind is your performance on a weekend. You know what I mean? That yes. that you know what I mean? I I hate this Opta in, index. You know what I mean? The Premier League, where mm-hmm. it, it tells it tells how far mm-hmm. people run and how you know what I mean? How much how, how much ground teams cover? You know what I mean? Well, it's not yeah. about how much ta- how much how much ground teams cover. You know what I mean? If I've got a team who keeps the ball. Um, mm. The team, the team who's running after the ball is going to run more than the team with the ball. It's obvious, you know what I mean, because mm. they haven't got the ball. Whereas you let the yeah. ball do the work, you know what I mean. And and that, that, that doesn't mean that they deserve to get a result from the game. It just des- it just means that they're not good on ball retention. That they're giving the ball away too much and they're running around and they're yeah. fit and they're healthy. But yeah. you know, what I mean? it's about putting that ball in the back of the net. It's about keeping clean sheets. Football is judged on results. We can refer back to the managers and managers are judged on results and promotions. And Neil Warnock mm. is so successful. His football is not great, by the way, but Neil no. Warnock is judged on promotions, um, ratios, of victories. Um, he's not judged on style of play. Leo said it earlier on. You know what I mean? So I, I watched. I watched the last five Middlesbrough games. They're unbeaten in five. They kept five clean sheets, and it's the worst football I've seen in a long time. But it works. Yeah. It's effective. I would. I'm, I'm, would I want it to change? If it if it meant mean them losing games, no, I don't. I, I want them to win. I want them to get promoted. Leo's just said it there. Middlesbrough get promoted. They'll be in a right mess because they won't be able to change the tactics to go and play in the Premier League. It'll be such a struggle. They won't be able to spend the kind of money they need to stay in the league. It'll be a, but the club yeah. will have earned a lot of money. So it's 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 a business, you know what I mean? And and the business is Neil Warnock's in the business of getting this team out of the, out of the Championship. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and he did it for Cardiff City. So it's yeah. it's it is what it is. Going back to stats, so if I'm a centre half and I've got a really good ratio of slide tackles, does that mean I'm very good? Or oh, I'm having to recover last minute too often. Yeah. If you're a centre forward, if you're centre forward, that means your touch wasn't very good because you weren't holding the ball. Mm-hmm. Up. <laughs> yeah. like, uh, but that's yeah. what Rio, Fer- but Rio, but Rio, Ferdinand, yeah. Rio Ferdinand said the same thing. Though, didn't he? Rio Ferdinand said about um, how many slides because his, his stats. So Rio Ferdinand didn't make any slide tackles in the season, right. but he didn't get but he didn't get booked because he didn't need the tackle. Because he yeah. stood up behind his behind his centre forward, and he yeah. made sure that, it, but nobody went the other way because he relied on his pace and he relied on a different way. Where defenders who who, who dive in, they give free kicks away, get silly bookings. Yeah. Stats yeah. are stats are such a difficult mm. thing to base base anyone's game mm. on, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Okay, so um, the last thing I was going to quickly say on managers. Um, Obviously, Philip Cock, who's out, Andy, we uh, we called this, what, 18 months ago, was it? Or a year yeah. ago? Yeah. It uh, looks like Rooney's going to take over, I would imagine. However, I don't think he's going to be taking over anytime soon. As I know he's in interim charge, but officially, because uh, they're in the midst of a takeover. So, yeah, I, 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 uh, I, find that one, I find that one strange, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure we'll, um, we can pick, we'll the bones out, pick the bones out on the Friday, yeah. Um, okay. Right. Let's let's uh, let's 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 move along a bit. Um, where do we start? And I suppose, um, uh... I, Leo, I'd like I'd like to start with um, with a certain person. You know, I mean, we did a we did a, a show on a, a certain teammate of ours um, uh, a good few months ago. Um, a certain Chris Barker, uh, who's obviously not with us any anymore. And I just I just want to start with a a little bit of a tribute. You know, what I mean, I know obviously you got yeah. on with him really well. He was, a, mm-hmm. uh, I lived with him for a short, I lived with him for a, with it for a short while and things, but I just like you to tell the viewers just your memories of Chris and, uh, and just, just something, just something about him basically yeah. from, yeah. from your memories. A really, a really centered, 
down to earth, you know, you know, he's, he's from Sheffield. Uh, he's, he's an honest lad. He's, he's genuine. He was kind. Uh, we, we, we shared, we shared a room together. You know, he, he spoke about, he spoke about, you know, life after football. He had an awareness of kind of what he wanted to do, what he wanted to kind of succeed in. Uh, and just, you know, he, he didn't strike you as anybody with, with any kind of, you know, um, uh, low mood episodes at all. He was just really kind of, you know, uh, say just a, a centered person. And it's just so difficult uh, because <clears throat> I think when you're playing, you're in a family of love. I think yeah. sometimes when you kind of move out of that, it's very hard and, and becoming isolated is, is, is very difficult. <clears throat> Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. You know whether he saw many players or he kept in touch, but you know, life outside football is very different. <clears throat> yeah, and I think, and I think that's probably something. You know, what I mean, it, it, it probably ties in with something we're def- definitely going to talk about. Um, it's a transition for me, Leo. You know, I, mean, I know we spoke about it, and obviously spoke about um, <laughs> at length about 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 what we're both doing outside and since football's gone. But do you think the transition is easy or should be easier for for footballers coming out of the game? Well, no, I mean, I say it's, it, I mean, ultimately, you've done something that you can never do again. You know, it, it's it, it, unlike, you know, like, like plumbing or carpentry, you can take a few years off and come back into it. But with football, once it's over, it's over. Uh, you've got lots of, lots of great memories. Um, I think probably what, what I found, and this is something that I speak often, is, I mean, I turned professional at 20, 23. And having worked, you know, regular uh, regular work before that, and within three months of of playing, being full time, I'd realised that I'd laughed more in three months than the three years prior, mm. and and that kind of feeling it, it never leaves you whilst you're playing. And then ultimately, you kind of you leave football and you're in a kind of more of a sombre world, and you know you, you're more light hearted, and because that's the way you've kind of you know developed over the past 10, 15 years. And it's very difficult to adjust into into normal life. Uh, in terms of the, the, the you know what help you need, what I found is that when I left, the first five years I still had the glow of football around me. You know, I still had that kind of feeling that you know I could play and that you know I was, I was younger. I think the the second five years is the more difficult because that's when you know your body starts to play up. Um, you you become a shadow of what you were back then, and I think that's when it hits you harder. That you know you, that that chapter is is really behind you. You said something interesting you... there. Said some, it's a, what, what two words? Normal normal life. You know what I mean? Normal life, mm. and and I think that's yeah. key. That's key for me because football's not a normal life. It's something that you that that you take for granted. That you you love doing. It's like a hobby, but you get paid for it. It's just such a, a surreal yeah. world. You know what I mean? You always dreamed about doing it, and then when you do it, it's like. You're going to do it forever, and then all of a sudden, you don't do it, and and yeah, and like Leo said, overnight you can be uh, something, and then nothing. You know, what I mean, you're earning money, then you're not earning money, and it's it's that trans- transition. And you know, I mean, I was lucky that I, I went from full time to part time because of an injury, and it was and it was probably an easier transition for me. Um, yeah, uh, within football terms, you know what I mean, than, than than playing one day and not playing the next. You know what I mean? We had James Coppinger on, obviously one of your uh, one of your yeah. very good ex teammates, mm-hmm. Donny. Um, and obviously, he's decided to hang his boots up, side on the next um, yeah. next May at the end of the end of the season. And I respect him so much for doing it, and so res- respect him so much for when he's doing, doing it, and why teams. he's doing it, and uh, and he's 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 leaving football on his terms when he's ready, um, and he can enjoy everything and more this season because he's he's deserved to do it. And I just hope. Yeah. Um, I just hope he, in a way that they don't get promoted because he he wants to have a go at the championship. But at mm-hmm. the same time, I'd love him to get promoted yeah. because what a way to go off, you know. Yeah, I mean, will he stop playing completely? Because that's very hard in itself. Yeah, well, um, I know he's got business um, things that he's that he's got going. Um, there is an opportunity. I know he's got something uh, local in the in the in the in the north area with uh, which which is near me uh, that he's got a um, an interest in a football club, part time, semi professional, uh, at quite a low level. But uh, if he wants to play, he could play very easily. But it's yeah. it's. Sometimes it's it's playing up there, and then all of a sudden having to drop your standards down to other people is can be difficult as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I say, I mean, I've not played now. You know, I've not played at a decent level for let's say ten years. What I do say to people I meet, younger people uh, who can play, I say, play as long as you can yeah. at any level, because yeah. once you can't play, that's it. 
you know, again, you, you can't go back. So as a, as a man, it's very important to get out there and get that kind of, you know, that, that, that um, release, endorphins, exercise, and, and team sports are great. Team sports yeah. give you so much more than the actual, the actual practice of it. Okay, for, for, for men out there who can play, you know, get, get with your mates and play regularly. It's a bit, you know, it's best time you're 100%. I, um, totally I agree. completely agree with that because um, I took for granted, like, playing football when I was a teenager. I discovered girls and drinking and things like that. And so I didn't follow, like, a football career. I don't know. I doubt it would have been good enough, but I didn't find out. And then when I started playing, like, Sunday league football a bit later, it was taken away from me through a car accident, which meant I can no longer play football, even just for fun. And I think... <clears throat> It's one of those things where even as a hobby, not even as a professional, once it's taken away from you, you realise how much you miss it. Um, <clears throat> so let's get into these questions because there is lots. Um, I'm going to try and do in order and I'm going to try not to miss anyone out. So uh, Gavin Randall said, uh, is Leo's nephew still playing football? Okay, no. So I've got two nephews, Jonathan and Clayton. Uh, Jonathan has yes. turned 40 this year. Uh, Clayton has <laughs> turned 38. So time flies. Uh, that makes, me, that makes me feel old. That makes me feel very old, Leo. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah, crazy. I mean, you know, I played against them both. Yeah, good uh, lads. Good, yeah, good, good, good players. Yeah, 10 years. Uh, yeah. Although I think Clayton still plays part-time, uh, which is yeah. great for him. But yeah. Uh, also asked, who's the best players Leo played with? Oh, okay. Um, the best player I played with. I mean, at the time, Adi Akinbay was very special uh, when he was coming through the ranks. Uh, it was, I was with Jin and actually it was probably one of the reasons why I left because I didn't, I didn't see uh, a place in the team with him still there. Uh, that was before his move. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I say such, such a talent uh, he was. Um, um, yeah, very good player. Other good players, um, you know, Danny Gabadon, just kind of he just really, you know, and Rolls Royce, Rolls yeah, Rolls Royce, exactly. You know, someone very smooth, never looks hurried. Um, you know, James Collin. You know, um, he, at the time when I was there, ironically, he was a centre forward, and then Lenny Lawrence converted him to centre half. And you know, look what he's done since then. So yeah, some real good players, some real good young players. Back on um, Adi Akinbayi, Leo. Um, how? How unjust then was was the stick that he got like later on in his career? You know what I mean? Because he, especially when he signed for Leicester City, he was um, yeah, he, he was getting he was getting donkeys abuse. You know what I mean? For, yeah. for dogs abuse for, yeah. uh, for yeah. donkeys years, not... you know. And I, and I thought that was I thought that was such a shame, you know, because listen, I, I sent the forward. You judge by your goals, and he was getting yeah. he was getting yeah. stick for missing chances. But and every every centre forward misses chances, right? Yeah. yeah. And then confidence plays such a, a major part as well. I mean, Leicester at that time, any player would have struggled. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's very easy to point a finger. I mean, ultimately, you know, he's, he's not a sort of half. He's not. He's not a, a fullback. But when you're sort of forward, there's no hiding. There's no hiding place. There's no hiding place. Uh, we've had a, we've had a good comment. So I was, I was I click on the last one. No, the last, there's, a, there's a last one. A last comment from a certain ex Cardiff City. Certain ex, ex, ex Cardiff uh, City right, player. No Christian ones. I'm right at the top, so I got it. <laughs> there's, your, there's your favourite player. There's your favourite player, Leo. Oh, yeah, Reese. Reese is a Reese is a Reese is a keen follower. Um, Good lad. Um, amazing on the show. Yeah, great lad. Yeah, great lad. Great lad. Loves, lo lad. loves loves getting cramped though, Leo, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we have some we have some great nights. Me and me and uh, Reese. We have some great nights out. And, and Des as well. Des Hamilton as well. Yeah, Des is a top bloke. Yeah, top fella. Mm. Uh, so, Cade, Cade Childs asked, uh, what was it like to play again alongside uh, A.D. Akinbaye at Gillingham as well? Which I know yeah, you I mean, touched on. But... I, I, mean, I, yeah, I mean, I was there the year before him, so obviously he came the year after. Um, okay. uh, yeah, uh, very good player. Obviously, he's a bit younger than me as well. Um, we knew he was... We knew Gillingham wasn't his, going to be his, his final level. We knew he was going higher. Uh, but yeah, just a really all-round, uh, a really all-round player, and, and the year he was there, he, he was, you know, he's brilliant. I mean, you know, we just missed that on the playoffs that year, I believe. Um, but a lot of it was kind of down to him uh, and how good he was. And I say, you know, he was one of the reasons why I left because I didn't feel that I could actually hold down a place with him still there. That's life. Oh, 
Could yeah. you tell he was going to be as good as what he was, Leo? You, could you tell at a young age that he was yeah. going to get the moves yeah. he was going to get? Yeah. And I think probably the things you look at um, on a forward is pace, composure and strength. Yeah. And, and he, had all, he had all three. He had yeah, all three. I mean, you know, you've got some players who've got pace, you've got some players who've got composure, but to have all three is it, very rounded. Yeah, totally um, agree. Totally agree. Crack, cracking question by uh, from Reese David Evans here. He says, "Just how special was Ninian Park?" Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's 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 it, it will always have a, a place in my heart for sure. Um, I think I think probably, you know, we did well there. The, the following was great. Um, it, it's a very a very well kept pitch. It's funny because. It was a concave pitch, from what I remember, mm. and you could be on the one side of, of the uh, of the pitch and not see the ball on the other side yeah. as it's going down. But yeah, it's a, a very special atmosphere, um, and obviously, you know, you, you do well, and they respond to that. What What was sport so special about Leon? What was What was difficult then for opposing teams and players to come and play there? Yeah, just just very hostile, really. Just just very hostile. You know, you you knew you had the backing of the crowd. Um, you know, sometimes when, when teams relocate, it kind of changes the, the identity. But I think Cardiff, fortunately, was able to just go across the road, which meant you kind of still kept that kind of feeling of, of, of Linnean Park around you. Yeah. Well, I, and I found that. And I, found, I also um, think in the changing rooms and the facilities and, and just, just the way that the ground's held, you know, that it's just... Uh, it gives you that little bit of an edge, you know, that, that when I came, um, obviously when I signed, that I, I just saw that every time an opposing players played there, they didn't want to they didn't want to play there. And it was, a, you know, I mean, I see the grounds now and they're all quite similar in stature. Um, they're not hostile. There's not really much atmosphere in terms of, when I mean atmosphere, I mean atmosphere like a hostile atmosphere. You know what I mean? There's, there's atmosphere is generated with a, with a lot of fans in the stadium, but mm. it's the same as the Riverside. It's the same as, we, we referred back, didn't we, say about mm. Arsenal's, you know what I mean, about Arsenal's stadium being a library. Yeah. But how can yeah. how can it be a library when you've got seventy thousand fans in it? I don't yeah. understand. But, yeah. but when when Indian Park had sixteen, seventeen thousand in on a Tuesday yeah. night against West Ham, it was rocking. Yeah, and also it's a fourth because bear in mind that you know Cardiff is in Wales and you're playing in the English in, in the English leagues. So there's that as well. So it's not just a, you know an opposing team uh, playing against Cardiff. It's an opposing team invariably playing in Wales. Yeah. Hundred um, percent. Andy John asks, "Did you enjoy uh, Armthorpe welfare as manager, Leo?" Uh, yeah, I mean, I wanted to to give back um, after I played. I think that the, the trouble was, and, and I suppose with most management, you, you kind of really dictated to by players. Now, ultimately, um, the, within let's say ten games, we lost the budget, and at that level. You've got players rarely who can get more money, you know, doing overtime of their their normal work. So, so once you lose a budget, it's very difficult to kind of keep the players. You know, you can't get players going to Scarborough or Bidlington on a Tuesday night. Uh, but in the whole, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I suppose that the, the financial constraints makes a big difference. And I suppose you, you talk about you know other managers at lower league levels is that a lot of it is dictated to by what kind of budget you've got in place and who you can attract. Would you do it again, Leo? I was just about to ask the same question. Uh, yeah, I would. I, I would. You know, provided if there's a, you've got a, you know a decent you know a decent range of kind of you know fairly experienced players, um, players who are looking to kind of got rise up through the leagues and, and a stable budget. A stable budget. I say we've been doing different hats. There would have been no budget at the start, but to lose it probably for a season, losing players straight away. Yeah, see, so both of you had a little stint in management. Yeah, got I, I got only, got I only say that, I right. only say that, Leo. I only say that, Leo, because um, obviously I, I did it same. I think it was exactly the same, same step, same level as you, you did, and I enjoyed it to a certain level. And then you talk about uh, budgets and player, player power. I'll probably call it and um, players leaving and going to a different club for an extra twenty pound, which uh, just astounded me. To be honest, I was, mm-hmm. I was gobsmacked and. Um, Oh, well, I'll never do it again, though. You know, it's something that, that I've tried, I enjoyed. I, I probably loved it. We didn't just enjoy it, I loved it. Um, but it was it was like a it was like a full time job in itself in a part time role. But and it's just not enough hours in the day to then really do what yeah. I wanted to do. And I've... I mean, I know what you mean. I mean, I suppose at, at my time there was an element of kind of you know, it's almost like they're, they're doing me a favour. You know, it's um, you need to get a bit more support from from those around you. 
uh, you know, boards as well. But I say a lot of it is dictated to by budgets. Um, yeah. And ultimately, you know, as a player, we view managers the same. You know, if they're playing, you know, they like you and they're not playing, they don't like you. Yeah. And I suppose as a manager, you, you know, you, you accept it. That if, you're not play, if you're not picking a player, he's not going to be too, uh, too, too keen on you. How would, um, how would Leo the manager cope with Leo the player? Mm. Um, yeah, well, I actually know exactly um, how, how I would do it. Um, <laughs> when, I, when I look back, uh, as a player, you know when you played badly yeah. and you know when you played well. Yeah, that's a given. You know, you, you can't fool anybody. As a player, you know you've done, you know, you know you done well, you know you've done badly. What I would have said to have made me a better player was whenever I did well, I needed to be told how I could do better. Hmm. You know, okay. so, so when, I, when I sat down uh, at the end of the game, having done well, I would like to say, look, if you've done well, this is what you can do better. Hmm. And that would, that would have improved me. So whose who's job is that then, Leo, to do that? Is that the manager's job? Is that the coaching staff? Whose job is that? Well, think? I suppose at, at those days, you you know, the manager and the, and the coach kind of rolled into one. Um, but I, I just kind of, I, I think back and I think, yeah, you know, you know when you've done well, but mm. there are parts of your game that you can do better. And I think probably yeah. you take on board, you take on board suggestions when you've done well, as opposed to when you've done badly, because it's, you know, it's all kind of been the room. I, when you, I talk, yeah. I, I totally agree, and I think, and I think sometimes it's it, it's a yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's it's like yeah, I totally agree. It's like sometimes you don't need to be told that you've you, you've played well, do you? But you always get told when you play badly, and that's the yeah. probably the thing that you don't like, do you? Every time you have a bad game, someone tells you you've had a bad game. But every time you've had yeah, a good you know, game, you hide, no one yeah. ever no one ever tells you. You know what I mean? But you mm. always know yourself, and you don't want the thing is that you don't need people to blow smoke up your backside when you played mm. well. But when you play yeah. badly. There's a, for me, man management and the good managers are those ones who, who say, put their arm around you and say, you're better than that. You can do better than that. That's a, that's a kick on the backside, not your rubbish and that wasn't good mm. enough. You know what I mean? There's a way to handle mm. and man manage players and, and adults and, mm. and footballers. And the, for me, the better managers I've worked under are people who do that, uh, who, who just mm. know, know how to pull my strings. and Because and, and, mm. players are like a puppet, aren't they? You know, what I mean, yeah. people and footballers are like a puppet, and we we play that we play the game, which 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 strings are pulled, you know. Yeah. So I, I think for, I think for me, I mean, I look at my game, and I refer to typeset too often. Where actually, I had more parts of my game that I could have developed. You know, it's, it's easy to be the big, strong guy who kind of you know bashes into 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 defenders and muffs people up, but I, I was better than that, and I'd like to be well. told. Yeah, I know you were. I know you were, and and and, and I've got. I can, I can example things. You see, so it's a good thing. Good thing about his side that um, that Leo, that Leo there. You know what I mean? The people, and I thought it was disrespectful at times. You know what I mean? I um, I witnessed probably one of the best goals I saw at Cardiff City. Uh, we played Swindon Town one day away from home at the county, county ground. It was quite early in the season. I think it was uh, a yeah. second or third game away, okay. and. Um, yeah. Yeah, we were we we were we weren't great. You know what I mean? I didn't think we played that great. We, I mean, we ended up winning the game one 0 and 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 it was going to have to take something special to to get the three points because they were a, they were an OK side and um, uh, Leo's goal was just out of this world. You know, he 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 orchestrated it in himself, flicked the ball over, ended up getting 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 a volley over the top in in, in the opposite top top corner. I and mean, you know, the moments in games and you see certain things in people. You know what I mean? And that for one, you know, what I mean, some of the goals we've seen at Indian Park and. And I think it's disrespectful sometimes. Leo's just said there about um, about uh, about being a battering ram, for example, or, mm. or me, about pace. You know what I mean? You, people have more things to their game which don't yeah. get used because of, the, because of the style of football, for example. You know what I mean? We were, mm. we were quite uh, quite a forward-thinking side of Cardiff, Leo, weren't we? Because I remember that game in particular, we played me, you and Thorny up front and the times yeah. that you, Ernie and Thorny mm. played or, or mm. me, you and Ernie played. You know what I mean? That Three forwards yeah. back then was... Yeah. Was quite risky, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was it was quite quite quite, quite, yeah. quite positive because yeah. we didn't play we didn't play now where we had one centre forward and two wide. We played anywhere. We went anywhere we wanted. We we didn't have a, a position where we were where we were being. It was it was strict. It was it was really enjoyable and it was um, it was such a different um, yeah. different way of playing for me. And it was but it was a nice way of playing because it was it was yeah. quite attacking. Yeah, well, I mean it's brilliant. I mean if you if you go back to the season before, I think it was the draw at Huddersfield. 
that meant that we ne- we couldn't have got automatic because we had this 15 game run and that was with three forwards. Yeah. And it's yeah. an, an amazing run. And, and again, you, you're right, that was so expensive and so, so attacking mm. uh, mm. that ultimately it, it just happened to it just happened too late. It didn't give us enough time to catch him. Yeah. And that year, he's gone up, you know. Um, hey, one, so of our, do, one of our I good friends. To, I was going to say, um, I, just before I go to Rob Boyle put in a cracking question earlier, which I'm because I'm still working through the questions, but I wanted yeah. to just circle back a couple of minutes and uh, put Andy on the spot. He asked you, uh, you Leo, uh, how you would have dealt with uh, yourself as a manager and as a player. Andy, how would you have dealt with yourself? as a, a coach and a player um i'd have i'd have played to my strengths and when i mean play to my strengths because i'm not a big fan of this um four two three one formation because I, I would have probably with the way the football's evolved i probably wouldn't have played a lot up front i'd have had to play probably wide or um i'd have had to adapt my game accordingly where for me i'd have i'd have played up front with a, a leo type player um brian dean a hamlet rickard and i'd have loved playing um off somebody who flicked the balls on, got hold of it, did the things that I didn't want to do and I'd have been a joy for a manager because I'd have loved it. But if I was playing up front of my own and I was getting battered, I was playing with my back to goal, I was um, I was doing things that I didn't want to do, I'd be getting frustrated and I'd have been waving my arms around. I'd have been going in the changing room and giving something back to the manager because that's not my game. I, I wouldn't want to have been out, out wide, not every week, because I, I, I wouldn't have got as many chances to score goals. So I would have been frustrated that my, um, that my stats weren't up to you know, up to thinking because mm. centre forwards get judged on goals, and you know what I mean. So it's for me, it's 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 a frustration. You know what I mean. So for me, a player like me needs to be played in the right right positions, run about round pegs and square holes, or square square pegs and round holes. It's for me as long as you look after players and play them where they're happy, you're going to get the best mm. out of a player. You run through a brick wall for I'll run through a brick wall for a manager who gives me everything back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, Love it. Uh, so here's a cracking question, which uh, Rob Boyle put this one in. He says, uh, if Leo could have uh, uh, could play with any strike partner, past or present, who would it be? Oh, it's a good question, that. Yeah, uh, that's a good, good question. Good question, that. Good question, yeah. that. Um, I mean, if I'm going to describe this player, he'd have to be very, very quick. Very quick. I mean, I, I mean, I wasn't slow, but a player was very quick. Um any player, past or present? Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, I suppose somebody like Teddy Sheridan. So, so Teddy Sheridan is an out-and-out kind of supporting, supporting forward. So somebody like that, you know, really doesn't want to be, doesn't want to score the goals, doesn't want to take the limelight, but mm. is there really just to bring the best out of you? And he like also him. he also wouldn't play in the in, in the areas that, that that you want to be in. So he he'd yeah. have his own area, and you'd have your area where you want to be in. So that's a that's a great answer. That yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I like that. Yeah. We had How we, you, had, Andy? we had Peter oh, Thorne. I think I'd I'd, I'd like um I I, I I I used to love Big Dunk. I would have loved to play with Big Dunk and Ferguson me because I you know what I mean. I was in awe when I was a younger mm-hmm. younger player. I played against him. Um, and he just took the. I, I was good friends with Francis Jeffers, and Francis always said that he was his ideal sprite partner because he took the pressure off. He did all the things that he didn't want to do, mm. and 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 let him just be the fox in the box. And he got loads of rewards, didn't he? He got him some good moves, and just by scoring goals. Mm. Where Duncan didn't score the goals, probably that his performances and his efforts and his enthusiasm get rewarded for sometimes, mm. which is. Yeah. But you but you do a good but you do a job for the team, right? Which is the important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll In tell you that one. Go on. I'll tell you another one. Uh, Emil Heskey, a great supporting okay. forward. Lots of lots of top players choose him as their, their, their best partner. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um, here's a question for you then, uh, for both of you, I suppose. is uh, In your opinion, who do you think is the greatest uh, kind of number nine target man, you know, in the ilk of sort of, whether it be like Leo or Duncan Ferguson, uh, People like that. Who do you think is the greatest in that position of all time? Uh, Andy, you go first. Shira, do you think? Shira. Uh, I just think. I, just, I, just, I see. I wouldn't see. I wouldn't class Allen as a as a target man. But he no. wore number nine. He led the line. Mm. But he scored the Held goals, the which he did everything. Yeah, he, he, he had the lot. You know what I mean? He'd win headers. He'd, 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 he'd score goals with his feet. He'd hold the ball up. He'd run in behind, and he would play. Probably that lone furry up front on his own. Sometimes, you know what I mean? I know Craig Bellamy joined him a couple of times, and he had other strike partners, but. 
he did yeah. it the majority on his own. You know, I know Blackburn, it was him and Chris Sutton, but he got yeah. the rewards, I think, and he was probably the top for me. Uh, you, yeah, uh, no, totally, totally agree. I, I definitely, Alan Shearer would be the best of the last centre forwards before the likes of Jogba changed it all and and Henri changed it all. But as as a number nine, as in you know our understanding of what number nine is, uh, Alan Shearer uh, for me. Okay, I'm sorry, I like that that because I was on the fly and uh, your sounds muted, love. Sorry, um, there's loads there's loads of players who, who around who, who do you know what I mean that. I look at a Calvin Lewin now, you know, that um, he scored a goal every Premier League game, or equivalent of, um, and he leads the line really well now, you know, that, you know what I mean, Harry Kane, you know what I mean, people, players are judged on results, aren't they, you know what I mean, the amount of goals Harry Kane scored for his country is just phenomenal, and I never expected anyone to, to surpass um, yeah. and break records, you know, so, you know, I mean, this, but records are let be broken, you know, that we, 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 yeah. the, question, the question on Magnificent Seven, um, uh, Messi or Ronaldo, you know what I mean, the, the the English players have pushed those kinds of stats, you know what I mean? Shearer's, the Robbie Fowler's, the Ian Wright's, the Harry Kane's, you know what I mean? We've had some phenomenal strikers in Britain, you know what I mean? Which which sometimes well, we probably take take for granted, don't we? You know what I mean? And these kind of mm-hmm. players, they've pushed each other. Andy Cole, you know what I mean? The, mm-hmm. yeah, the, the numbers yeah, are just terrific, yeah. Terrific. Uh, Richie asks, what would Leo's favourite moment playing at Ninian Park be? Um, my debut, where we played Halifax, um, just moved from Rotherham. Uh, so I think we won that game 4 2. Uh, I scored, uh, fortunately. Um, another wonderful memory was the, the Leeds game. Um, you know, again, uh, a, a, a day came to Wells, you know, top of the top of the Premiership with all the big guns there. And it was just a, a, such a great turnaround. Um, a bit marred afterwards, it kind of became a, a, a fans uh, incident and a bit of hooliganism, which I, you know, you know, I was there. It, it wasn't really, it wasn't really. But I think probably a lot of the media was anti Walsh at the time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's a, that's an amazing memory, and I still see it sometimes on Sky Sports, uh, just being there that day, and I see you know being around when that when that winner was scored. So Did back, uh, back uh, uh, how good Cavs goal was that day, by the way, uh, mm. it was a phenomenal free kick. But then it back, was. Leo, but talking about uh, talking about Leeds, then you know what I mean. So t- talk us through it. So you're you're in the changing room about quarter past two, two o'clock when um, uh, when he well when the assistant manager goes in and gets a team sheet with the captain, comes back, and obviously then you talk about the opposition player. They had yeah. a yeah. phenomenal world class yeah. side. You know what I mean with Olivier Decor, Rio Ferdinand, Alan Smith. Um, yeah. You know what I mean. They had a Harry Kuehl. You know what I mean. They had a they had an excellent side, world class mm-hmm. side. They do it. They were they were they were pushing the Champions yeah. League all the way to the semi final against Valencia. You know. So how yeah. did so, how did the play, how did the players feel? Well, I mean, let's be honest. It's a free hit, isn't it? It's a free hit. So you know, it's better to lose. Uh, you go out there. You know, you you, you find an audience, a Sky audience. You you go out there. You, you do your best. I think, you know, normally these things do happen uh, when a team has a giant killing, but we want to go down and, and to come back having, because most of us, you know, most would have, you know, witnessed off having gone a goal down, but you, you go a goal down and to have the, the you know, the, the courage and the bravery to, to equalise. And then once we equalised, you know, there was no fear. You know, there was no fear. And, and, and uh, it, it stays at one all. And as the clock ticks, it's more jeopardy, isn't it, really? You think, you know, yeah. one chance and we're out. And then that's what happened. It was a great day. Yeah. But Sai, what, what comes Phenomenal. with good, what comes with good or the opposite of good is, is obviously bad. And, and there's obviously been some been some tough times as well at Ninian, uh, obviously, it's during your time there. Don, I think Don asked a question earlier on because it's it stuck with me. And it's one of the games which which has always stuck with me, with me during during my time at Cardiff City Ninian Park is uh, obviously what went wrong, in your opinion, against uh, Stoke City? Because obviously, we played Stoke away from home at um, the Britannia and we beat them. I think we beat them 1-0 or 2-1 in the first leg. 2-1, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then we obviously played, played at home and... Uh, and obviously, you know, I mean, it was the timings for me, the timings of the two goals right at the end of 90, right at the end of extra time. And, and it was just, it was obviously heartbreaking, wasn't it? But how did, um, how did it feel for you and how did you get over it? Is that me? Yeah, to me. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, obviously that's a game I'm never going to forget in my life. Um, and a game that I, I dwell upon. What went wrong is that we never scored. We never scored in the first half. 
um, halfway through the second half, the mindset changes. So you start the game wanting to win, and you try and score a goal, and then as time ticks on, it's about not conceding. So, you know, you, you, you're quite advanced, you're pushing players up, and as time goes on, you're just kind of, you know, you, you're less expansive, you're being more defensive, and in the end, it was literally a, a defensive exercise. Um, once they scored the equaliser, uh, we were gone. Um, and that's, you know, that's what happens. Uh, and that's what happens. I think probably, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, and I think sometimes when you look at these, these really important games, sometimes being at home can be a disadvantage. Um, and especially as we won at Stoke as well. So you win at Stoke, you think, okay, yeah, we're, you know, they're, they're at home now, we're turning them over. Well, actually, for them, they'd lost at home. So they had nothing to lose. You know, so again, you know, mm. it, it, we started off well, um, couldn't score, and then the mindset changed. And then once they scored, that was it. Well, goals, goals change games, Leo, don't they? I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I, I just remember the feeling because you, you're expecting it, you know what I mean? And, and as a player, you get, we get games like this as a, as a fan when you watch games as a fan. And as a player, you, you stood on the pitch and you're expecting the worst. You know the worst is coming, but you, you're just trying to grit your teeth. You're trying to hope something can... Um, can change around for some kind of fortune, and you know, what I mean, that it was a, it was a yeah. feeling after the game for me. You know, what I mean, how disappointed the fans mm-hmm. were, and and knowing that 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 was it for the season, and you've got to wait till pre-season to get things right. And it was such mm-hmm. a for me the transition. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd only just joined the club um, towards the end of the season. Mm-hmm. It was such a such a difficult summer and such a time mm-hmm. in my life where I thought, you know what, I've got to work hard next mm-hmm. pre-season. I've got to got to turn it round. We've got to be nice and positive. Yeah. We've got to got to get it right. You know. Yeah, I mean, not to beat ourselves up about that game, but if you, you look historically, how many teams have finished third and lost in the playoffs? Yeah, the majority too many. do. Yeah, the majority too many, do. Yeah. There's a reason why. You know, mm. you, you just squeeze into the, the playoffs and then you fly yeah. in, aren't you? Whereas, yeah. you know, two or three games prior, we could have gone up automatically, yeah. you know? And then you go from yeah. that to being, you know, because of, because of the form, red hot favourites. And then it just all, all changes. Yeah, fine margins, and that's and that's uh, yeah, and that's a good thing. Is it's a good thing about football, and it keeps it interesting. You know, we're on about. Um, mm-hmm. You could probably look the season that we got promoted. You know, that QPR got beaten the playoff final. The following season, yeah. they were so determined to get it right, they won the league. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah they've yeah. had the best that's of both. Good. You know, I know they lose players and things, and, and they bring different personnel in. But it's it's yeah. so important to have a reaction the following year, and the reaction is yeah. key, key, key for everything for me. I mean, obviously, the, the goal you scored, Andy, you know, we, we beat Bristol City and QPR. So we yeah. weren't the favourites. You know, it, when that yeah, first, no. when the most players happy, we weren't the favourites. And yet we, we yeah. were not. Yeah, I know. And that, well, that, that was the thing because we 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 had a, we've had a chat about it, haven't we? And we've had a chat with certain certain other players on this on this show about um, we went into the playoffs under form. We, we we weren't playing very well. We weren't very confident. And then we probably pull out the the three stubbornest performances of the season, three clean sheets. Um, mm. Didn't we just ground the result out for three games, and it's it, and that's the way you do it, and that's the way that you get over the line. Because if we'd have done that seven games ago, we'd have got promoted automatically, mm. we wouldn't have had to go through the playoffs, and it would have been a, a, a longer summer. Uh, the celebrations, mm. you know what I mean? But you know what I mean? It's the nicest way to go up. It's the worst way mm. to lose. The worst yeah. way to lose. Yeah, I mean, I say I mean, I've never gone up. I've never gone up via playoff. I've always kind of you know lost in the final, semi final. I have gone up automatically, um, and I can imagine the ecstasy, you know, when you do go up in you know, at Wembley or Cardiff. Um, yeah. But I mean, ultimately, the playoffs is lottery. You know, many yeah. a good team that deserve to go up have not gone up in the playoffs. Yeah, totally oh, agree. Yeah. yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Well, we, well, obviously, we do the championship show side, don't we? You know what I mean? Yeah. We we raved about last year, Brentford. We were Brentford, Brentford, Brentford. Get to the playoff semi final. They're not having a great time, but they'll turn it around. They turned it around. Get the playoff final. There's only one winner. They didn't turn up. Just the big players, and I'm on about eleven of them. Didn't turn up for the final. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean? it's not just the Ollie Watkins and the Ben Ramers and all these kind of players. Mm-hmm. The whole team just didn't turn just up didn't on the change. biggest occasion at Wembley, and such a shame because. Mm-hmm. But then, but then these individual footballers just disperse, and now they're in the Premier League anyway. So they were all, it was always yeah. going to happen. And then you look at Nottingham Forest, who who were in the playoffs, and suddenly on the last couple of minutes of the final day of the season. They're out mm. of the playoffs on goal difference, and it's affected them right up to today. Like they, you know, like it's only the last two games, three games, where they've started to look more like the team they're capable of being. Um, yeah. 
Cade Childs uh, asks, when Andy came to yours for Christmas Day, uh, Christmas dinner, did you pull the champagne out? <laughs> Um, let me no, let, let, no. let me let, let me let me let me start let, let me start that one though because obviously this for me this is this is a big thing and this is the, and the, and this is the, the story that I was talking about at the start that being a footballer is the best thing in the world it's an amazing um, privileged uh, position to be in but at certain times of the year it can be very uh, lonely it can be very sad it can be very selfish um, and you've got to try and live your life like you do uh, 365 days around the year so obviously Christmas Day. Um, my first time at a Cardiff, so I was away from the family. The family were going to come up Christmas Day um, or Christmas Eve and spend Christmas Day with me uh, and spend a couple of days. But I think we were training on Christmas night. Um, yeah. So I said to me, I said to me, I said to me family, I said to me girlfriend, um, listen, there's no point coming here because you're going to be on your own. So, you know, what I mean? you stay with the family, stay everybody together and, and I'll just sit in, I'll go to training, just be a normal day. It's just, it's just another day for, for a football. It's just another day. Um, uh, sat in. I think I'd bought a, a ready meal from Asda, ready to stick in the um, in the microwave. And then Leo knocked on the door, invited me round um, to his place, which was a couple of doors down. Um, all his cousins were there. Obviously, his wife made Christmas dinner, and it was just it was just it, it was a gesture that it was just amazing. Yeah. It was always all things it's always stick phenomenal by you. thing to do, mate. Yeah, you know what I mean. People don't have to do these kind of things. You know what I mean? But they stick by you because genuinely nice people do nice mm. things, and you know what I mean. Mm. And 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 I've never nah, listen. Until I did this show, that was one thing that I've never come out publicly and told anybody because it was a thing. But I think for me, though, these are the kind of things that people need to know what other people are like. You know what I mean? If yeah. we're all we're all we're all quite quick to uh, to jump on the back of somebody who's done something wrong. You know what I mean? And publicly or within your friends or oh, friendship mate. circles. But when somebody does yeah. something right, you don't tell anybody. Why? No. You know what I mean? If somebody does something nice. For me, shout out from the rooftops, and that, and that's been my probably, mate. that's been my probably um, the way my outlook on life in the last year, with certain things that have gone on. That if somebody does something nice for me, or I see it nice, I, I perceive it to be nice. I'm telling everybody. I'm telling everyone. Yeah, I say so, yeah. you know back then it's just it, it's a gesture. It's seen the right thing to do. You know, we got on well. There's no issue. Yeah. Yeah. You come, you come round. We eat together. We train together. We play together. Yeah. You know, we're all friends. It's, you know, this is what we do. I mean, mm -hmm. throughout my time in football, I've met a wonderful range of different people. And I say, you know, we are regular down to earth guys, uh, and there's there's good everywhere. There really mm -hmm. is. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think people class it as normal. They don't class like uh, football as normal people, and these do these do like that normal things. You know, that it's just. Uh, it's uh, it's just bang on. That's just uh, yeah. That's 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 in a nutshell, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 I, um... say, and, and sorry, going to Christmas. It's a funny one because Christmas doesn't really exist for us because mm -hmm. since the age of seventeen, mm -hmm. I was playing on Boxing Day. So whereas the the, the whole country, the whole world has a real you know a, a lavish meal with family. As a footballer, your mind's really about kind of you know getting the the few you need. Uh, resting yeah. and playing next day. Hmm. Well, I, I'd always uh, the, coming to Cardiff was was obviously different because Cardiff did, did it differently than I'd ever uh, I'd ever witnessed. Because uh, at Middlesbrough, we always train Christmas morning. We train at eight o'clock in the morning instead of probably half past nine, ten o'clock, um, and then we'd be able to go back, have some dinner, and then come back and travel. You know what I mean? So every team does does has, has a little 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 way of doing it. Obviously, Cardiff, um, we were able to have the morning off with the family afternoon off I think we I think we trained at like four or five o'clock in the evening and then went straight yeah. on the bus for the away game and it's just it, that was fantastic you know what I mean because it give it give you an opportunity to you know what I mean because at the time when you don't have children it's like well you, you selfishly you, you think mm. in a different way but um mm. when when footballers who have children young children and they want to wake up and open presents and things I just think it's a it's a magical time for kids family yeah. people but as a footballer you it's just another day, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying this mm -hmm. for people to feel sorry for people and feel sorry for footballers, but it's um, mm -hmm. I've never seen it as a as, as a time to celebrate. And even now, when I when I'm not a player, it, it it I still have that mentality of you know what I mean. I don't have a drink. I don't, you know what I mean. I, I still just don't do it. I don't know why. I, don't, I just think it's a it's a it's a, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's a football it's a football day tomorrow. You know, Boxing Day is a football day, so I need to be right. You know what I mean? Even though, even though I'm just watching it, I've still got to be right. So. Yeah, I don't I can't about you, eat too man, much. But... Yeah, but what I hated, I hated New Year's Day. Because invariably, yeah. you're in a hotel in bed by 11, 
hearing yeah. parties going on downstairs. And that was the worst yeah. part, wasn't it? Yeah, that was. Uh, uh, yeah, that that wasn't great. And uh, and it and probably and, and the longer football went because it was normally FA Cup day, wasn't it? Normally on the early early um, early no, January, exactly. if not the, if not yeah. if not the third. You know what I mean? So you'd have a you just have pure football. You'd you'd, you'd be in a hotel yeah. New Year's Eve. Couldn't have a couldn't celebrate. Couldn't even see the new year in. And then all of a sudden yeah. you just have games, 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 and it's just a, yeah, it's just a physically great. demanding, mentally demanding time of the of the year for a footballer. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Um, by the way, Andy, I was just thinking, just thinking that I was imagining you living alone, cooking, uh, making yourself a ready meal on Christmas Day. Uh, it's just like this is like one of the most depressing you know, things I've ever heard. <laughs> but you know what, right? I I I I wasn't a bad cook. I wasn't a bad cook. I just thought, do you know, what I mean? like certain times in quick, you just, yeah, it just wanted easier life. You know, it was like like yeah, and 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 I think the more if you 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 started cooking a big meal for yourself, you probably start to think yeah. about other people. So sometimes it's just oh, put them on either. TV, and it's yeah, yeah, it was quite yeah. Well, I li- we lived in a nice place. We lived in a in a lovely apartment in Cardiff Bay, and it was, you know, what I mean, it was nice views yeah. out the park and as well, yeah. So it was, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, it was lovely. Uh, Gaz asks, uh, who did Leo grow up supporting? Oh, okay, good one. So where I'm from, Stratford, East London, it's in between West Ham and Leighton Orient. So um, it, it, it was probably safer and wiser to go to Leighton Orient. <laughs> so I went to Le- at the time, at the time, I mean, West Ham's great now. Uh, so I went to Leighton Orient and kind of grew up with those players as my idol. Yeah, yeah. And actually, to be fair, uh, when I was uh, very, very young, uh, it was the first kind of organised game I, I saw in a stadium. Uh, back in those days, they'll open the gates at half time. So as a young kid, I kind of walked in, walked up the stairs. And then as, as soon as I saw the pitch and saw the players on the pitch, uh, I, I fell in love with football straight away. Amazing. Uh, what was what was magical right. about it then, Leo? So what was, well, like, what, like, when you say you've seen the pitch yeah. and you've seen the players yeah. and, you know what I mean? Because obviously Brisbane Road as well, it's quite, quite close knit. It's quite close ground, isn't it? So yeah. you, you're more or less yeah. on top of the players. Is that what, yeah. is that what you enjoyed well, about yeah. it? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I'd seen football being played. But I've never, I've never seen it live in a stadium, you know, like in a section of stadium where you've got stands, you've got fans, you've got players, you, you know, it's the first time I saw an organised, uh, you know, game of football in a stadium. Yeah, no, it was a great answer. We've got, we've, we've got quite a lot of West Ham fans as well, haven't we, who, uh, know, yeah, who re- religiously, religiously watch the show and uh, yeah. oh, they'd, they'd have been... They'd have been made up if you said West Ham, but I'm quite, I'm yeah, quietly, yeah. I'm quite, I'm quietly pleased you didn't. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, I was, I was very small back then, and I, you know, I went, I went to the games by myself, so I, um, yeah, just, but, but you know, there's less people. That let's say there's less people at Leighton Orient, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stuart Campbell, obviously Andy's father, says, uh, knowing, knowing what you know now about the game, would you encourage anyone to go into it? I missed that question there, so I said that again. Okay, sorry. So uh, he said, uh, knowing what you know now about the game now, would you encourage anyone to get into football? Me or Leo? Uh, Leo. All right, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, th- there are massive pitfalls, and obviously when you finish, but ultimately it's the best job you're going to have. I mean, yeah, you know, a, a lawyer, a doctor, these are all brilliant lifelong jobs, but... There's only uh, there's only a, 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 a short period of time where physically uh, you can do this job as a young man, and it's just the, the best experience um, for me, the best experience I've, I've ever had. And I've been I'm so fortunate. You know, every day I say to you know my children and people I know that there are better players than me playing Sunday football. But I was lucky enough that I had a, I had a, a few more extra things that got me. Uh, as a full-time footballer, and uh, you know, it's it's I, I, I will die with happy memories of playing. Incredible! I love it. I just I could listen to you all night, Leo. I could, but Le- Le- Leo, then, so you know, I mean, obviously, you'd encourage people to do it. But um, if you could go back and finish your and and relive your career again, would you do it any differently? The difficulty you do. When you get to, I mean, I got to maybe 35 and rather than thinking, well, let me prepare for the future, I was more professional. So resting became more of a point. So at the latter end, you do more to prolong the career. 
yeah. uh, than when you do prepare for, for life after. It's very hard to be distracted whilst you're playing about what you're going to do. So, so ultimately, you know, all I can say to players is that, you know, when you finish, you're not alone. There you can you speak to thousands of players who have gone through what you've gone through and that should be your support base. But it is a different world. Uh, and this will make you laugh. Um, when I played, I never understood why people had a drink on Friday. And I swear to you, within two years of work normally, when I come on a Friday, <laughs> I have a drink. <laughs> you can't believe it. <laughs> and, and, so it's funny. and also, I mean, for me, Monday was the best day. And that's a total contrast to, to you know, working, you know, a non-football. So when you, when you when I, as a footballer, you're going to work on a Monday, if you've done well on a Saturday, you're still buzzing. Yeah. If you've done badly, it's a new start. Yeah. So either way, either way is a great day. Yeah. Yeah, and you and you and, and, and you're doing something that you want to do, and it's yeah, I I, I totally agree, and it's every every day because the things are like, every day is different. You know what I mean? It, it, whereas every day out of football is 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 quite a similar day. You know that where, where in football you you might have a midweek game, you might have a reserve game, you might have a practice yeah. game, you might have a, a recovery day. It's just it's every every week's different. That the, the weeks are planned around the around the players, around the individuals, and it's just. Uh, it's just an amazing, amazing thing. Yeah. And like you, you know, we love what we do now. Uh, but football wasn't a job, it was a privilege, really. It was a privilege. Yeah, 100%. Uh, it's very different. 100%. 100%. And, I, and I, think that's the, I think that's the thing, though, you know what I mean? I think when you, when you realise that and understand that and realise how lucky we were and had the opportunity to play with each other in front of fans, um, for these kind of clubs... Um, I, th- I just think it's 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 amazing, amazing, amazing opportunity. Yeah. Um, yeah. Craig says, uh, "Do you ever come back to Cardiff, and uh, do you still get recognised and enjoy it?" Uh, Leo. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I do get recognised. Uh, I, I do feel slightly embarrassed uh, because that's how I am. I don't kind of, you know, uh, you know lord my face around. I went to the last time to Cardiff was uh, to my son. My 17-year-old went to a West Ham game and that was in the, the premiership when we won 2-0. Uh, and actually, we was a bit early, so we had a chance to kind of walk around and go to, to Grange, you know, to, to go to where we lived, the apartments. And obviously, I, I showed him around uh, where he was. But yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I went there. I mean, I, it's quite far. It's about five hours from, from where I live now. Uh, but yeah, I'm always looking for opportunities to get back to Cardiff. Yeah, it's just great yeah. memories. And, and again, you know, Andy will feel the same as well. Whenever you're at a club and you get promotion, you become part of that history and that yeah. never leaves you, you know, never leaves you. So it'll always be, you know, in my heart. I think, I think, I think we were really lucky, Leo, that we had a, we had a good relationship. We spoke earlier, you said the words about family, you know, I mean, we had a family team, you know what I mean? And then there was the family of the supporters, you know what I mean? So we were, we were, you know I mean? We were, we were young people then, you know what I mean? Young people who, uh, who, had, who had young families at the time and you were, they bought into what we were trying to do, and it was just—it was just amazing. How they treat us was it never gets forgotten about, you know what I mean? And, and that's the reason why, for me, I want to go—I want to keep going back, you know what I mean? Because you're, you're held in fond regard, and um, yeah. and and you, you had good fond memories. If you didn't want to, you wouldn't want to do it, and certainly wouldn't want to uh, keep talking about it and 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 reliving it. And it's happy times in football and happy times in your life, you know what I mean? Because it's it's those kind of memory side that no one can ever take away from you, you know what I mean? Like supporters don't forget. You know what I mean? And I always said, and I keep saying to you and I drum onto people on here that um, 17 years ago we got promoted. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that seems that lifetime ago it is. But it's, it's yeah. the group that we got promoted with are fondly regarded now probably more than they were back then. You know what I mean? They realise now that we've played, we played a huge part in where yeah. that football club is now. You know what I mean? And, and at the time, it didn't. It probably wasn't a big thing, but now it's massive because to see where the club is, it's just come out of the Premier League. You know what I mean? It's it's stabilising the Championship. It could go. It could go back up. You know what I mean? But yeah. where would they be if we hadn't got promoted that year? You know what I mean? Because yeah. the the Danny Gabidons, the Robert Earnshaws, the James Collins, the Graham Cavanaghs, the Leo Fortune West, the Andy Campbell, the mm-hmm. Peter Thorne. There's. The, I guarantee you, seven out of those nine names probably mm-hmm. won't have been there anymore because it's just football. Yeah, and actually, you're absolutely right. You know, you play a role in 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 the uh, the, the the club's history because ultimately, you know, with the the, the promotion uh, the year before you came and obviously the promotion promotion when you was there, that meant other players came as well. 
you know, and that just kind of builds and builds and builds. And it's just a wonderful, it's, it's just wonderful being part of the club, you know, part of the history. You know, I'm asked to compare my other clubs and I've loved all of my other clubs, but you talked about a capital city and that's just amazing, you know. Yeah. You spoke, Leo, there about promotions, so plural, so there's, so there's obviously more than one. Um, tell me about Lee, tell me about the York City game because I, I, obviously I've 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 known this for obviously a long time. I know that people yeah. um, look back at that game as a as a pivotal part of history of the club. Um, but yeah. individually, individual for you, it was a it was yeah. a an amazing amazing occasion, an amazing game. Like why? So yeah. tell everybody who probably doesn't know. Yeah, yeah no, you're right. I mean, obviously, it, it worked out very well uh, for for the club and for me personally. With obviously the, the goals I scored. I mean, I'll go back to a game we played late in Orient at home and we won that game three to, I think, Kurt Nogan scored. And, and that was the, the kind of, the, the, the tide turned with the belief. And I think from that, that just kind of galvanised us to, to, to be stronger and better. Um, I say the game, you know, it, it's when you're up there, you're up there to be shot at and York played well that game. Um, but we just kept we just kept managing to kind of edge ahead and then they equalised and we kind of, you know, edged ahead again. And ultimately, you know, we got the point that we wanted and for all the fans travelling, just is amazing, amazing experience. And, and obviously, you know, uh, within either the season and the season after that, you know, championship, so you've gone from kind of league to the championship within three years. Just great. Amazing. That is uh, some story, that, isn't it? Um, so Brad Baston asked uh, Leo and Andy, uh, "What's your favourite Cardiff City goal that you scored apart from the QPR goal, Andy?" Uh, so Andy, we'll start with you, and then we'll go to Leo. Um, I'll go. Uh, I think it was number two at Oldham when I got uh, the pie thrown in my face um, at Oldham. Obviously, with a with a, I think we were five 0 up at the time. I think that was the, the, five, the fifth goal, and it was. It was a memorable goal because of what happened after, but also it was a it was a it was a really good goal for me personally because I scored against one of my heroes as well because Andy Gorham was in goal and it was a it was a goal which taking around the goalkeeper it means a little bit more because it's something that I just love doing. I just love taking around the goalkeeper, making goalkeepers look a bit silly, and making a hero look silly is something which makes him makes me smile. So yeah, I'd, I'd say that one. Great. Andy, was that your biggest win for a club? Seven one. Um, yeah, yeah, it was the biggest win. Uh, it was the most yeah. enjoyable game I'd, I'd, I've ever played in. I'll be honest. Every time we got the ball, we looked like we were going to score. Um, when I, when we spoke earlier about um, the way that Lenny had us playing and and, and playing attacking, expansive, yeah. just three centre forwards. It was a great game. Yeah. It, it was just it was so enjoyable. You know, I I I, uh, I was good friends. I still, I'm I'm good friends with Sean Gregan. Obviously, Sean marked me and you that game, um, yeah. and I've I've had a few conversations with him since about um, how much that's his worst game of his career he hated every second of it um, he wanted just to go off at half time but listen I wanted that game to prolong for forever it was yeah. just one of those one of those games which just you know what I mean I've, I've been on the other end of a, a 7-1 defeat twice in my yeah. career which yeah. is yeah. brutal but it's it's part and parcel yeah. of football you know that you, you've got to enjoy them when, when, they, when they happen the they, it, they might never happen and luckily for us it did happen but probably won't, it won't yeah. happen again but yeah, it was right. an amazing game. Amazing game. Oh, yeah, it really was, yeah. Just, you know, breathtaking, really. Um, yeah. So, so we, we played Reading. Um, um, we played Reading the, um, away, it was. Uh, we beat them 2-1. And I think I scored two goals in that game and also had one disallowed as well. And again, I think that was 23,000. That was quite, it was a big game back then. And I, again, from start to finish, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that game. Uh, when it comes to the best goal I've scored, uh, it will be against Port Vale at home. When I've kind of, you know, it's been a, it's been a great move and for two or three players. It yeah. came back to me. I started working back to me. Uh, outside the left foot, it was the top corner. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that game. Yeah, and that goal. I love in that top bins, left foot, outside of the foot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that was uh, a, that, that, but that was the thing to say. You know, I mean, one about people, not people. That sounds that sounds, sounds bad, but. Um, People giving Leo yeah, the, it's not being just just not being giving Leo the, the respect. You know what I mean? People giving him, um, yeah. you know what I mean? Like for me, you've got to you've got to show him in a in a, in a certain way, mm. not letting him shoot because he had the ability to to bend it with his yeah. outside of his left foot. That's what he did. Yeah. Didn't he? Well, right. you know I mean? maybe maybe they thought he couldn't do it. But, yeah, so and game, I mean, it, I should have scored. I should have scored more goals like that. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, your former teammate, Gethin Jones, says, uh, still a great person, Leo. Do you still play two-touch? 
Uh, do you know what? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I don't. No, I don't. Um, um, but yeah, see that these, those are the little things that kind of make you make you happy when you look back because you know yeah. I'd love to touch. I love a circle. You know, I'll give everything to have a circle now. Um, but yeah, these are the little things that, that you do in training, before training, after training, that kind of really gets the players together and also improves you as well. You know, mm. um, it, you try to say to young uh, players now, when you when you go into a football ground, the training ground, you know, don't sit around, don't just kind of, you know, chit and chat, get yourself out, get yourself with a mate, do a bit of two touch, have a bit of, you know, get in a circle and that will improve you as well. Yeah. I totally agree, Sam. Si. This is this I is the time when you're you're, you're the first on the training ground. You're the last off the training ground, and these are the reasons mm-hmm. why. Because if you're not having a very good time on and off the pitch, you know what I mean. You can guarantee by by ten past ten, if you start and train at ten o'clock, you've got a smile on your face mm-hmm. because you you're in a circle and everyone's laughing and joking. Uh, and then we're having a bit of team play, and you might not be playing and you're disappointed, but after the game, you can have a game of two touch or have some shooting practice and have a bit of fun. And it, by the time that you've you finish your session, you, you've forgotten about the issues you're having, or you know what I mean. It's so, it's just the best place to be on. You know what I mean. The training ground just it, it, listen. It was ruthless at times. It was it was the best time in the world, the worst time in the world. But I tell you what, it, it got you. It just it just put a smile on your face every single day because something was happening. Somebody was having fun. Someone was and when you've seen someone like Leo and Geth and Barks and and Simo and all these kind of players, infectious players people mm-hmm. you just wanted to be a part of it and jump on board and and, and, and carry on because mm-hmm. you know what i mean these guys who who didn't play the games that they wanted to play but they still had a smile on the face you know what i mean they weren't selfish mm-hmm. they were part of a group they were part of a team you know what i mean that des paul brace and these kind of lads mm-hmm. who, 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 yeah, yeah. who brought the club to a level where leo said they got promoted other new players came in like myself and you know what i mean it's disappointing for them but it's they still tried every day the train they had a smile on the face they worked hard they had so much fun and it's just, it was absolutely infectious, infectious. It's never about the 11 on the pitch. It's, it's the 20, you know, it's the 20 players that get you there. Because because those guys are not playing. They're the ones that are pushing you. They're yeah. pushing you to, to remain in the team. Yeah. Well, then, when Leo said Ty, earlier on about um, uh, the 11 game run we were on, you know what I mean? And and it's not just about, Leo said, it's not just about the lads who, 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 who played at the start and at the end of that run. You know what I mean? Because you're always looking over your shoulder. You're looking over your shoulder as a centre forward at uh, at yeah. Ernie, at Paul Brayson, at Gavin Gordon. You know what I mean? Because you know that they can come on a sub, they can score. Yeah. We knew, we knew, we knew that Lenny was fair. You know what I mean? Lenny's fair. Corky's yeah. fair. You know what I mean? The managers are fair. Yeah. If players come in and do a better job, they're going to play. So it's about yeah. keeping your place and and being selfish and being stubborn to keep them out, but also yeah. be 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 part of that team and the, and the group which is going to push it along because. It's so enjoyable when things are going right, you know what I mean? But it's also good to be... It's also also good being out with the team, knowing that you're helping pushing the team along, you know what I mean? I spent a lot of the lot of the season we got promoted out the team pushing yeah. Ernie along, you know what I mean? I spent a lot of time yeah. playing second fiddle and it yeah. can be tough, it can be hard, but the days yeah. of the week kept me going, you know what I mean? The, game, the, the match day was yeah. the tough, toughest day. The week for reason. Yeah. It was the, it was a it was a night training, on the Saturday. Which, training, yeah, training was easy. And the, and the, the, the banter between teammates and changing room and on the training pitch is something which I would imagine gets you through that week and obviously like you say Andy when you are on the bench that's when it's the most difficult during the week when you're training and having fun doing it yeah. that's that's not so difficult as but not mm. difficult but not so difficult if you're out of the team is what I mean yeah. Um, yeah. Luke Dobson asks you both uh, what improvements do you think the current Cardiff team could make or need to work on at the moment. Uh, Leo, you go first this time. Well, as I say, I've not seen uh, much of kind of this year, um, so I, I wouldn't really like to comment. I think this yeah. year is, is, is quite a difficult year. Obviously, we're not having any fans involved. Uh, I'm not sure what happens in terms of the teams who are up there. Would they be up there because they, they haven't got the fans or because they've got the fans? I think the fans play a, a, a massive, a massive role. I think probably now the players who are playing, they realise how important the fans are because they, you know, they haven't got them. Um, I, I, see, it, it, it is a bit pressurised for Cardiff because obviously it's, it's a big city and it can sustain a league, a team in the highest league. So it's just about really, you know, just keep pushing forward, trying to build a team, not just for one year in the Premiership. Uh, that will stay there for, you know, 
a good few years. And uh, Andy, anything to add to that, mate? Um, I'd like to see two centre forwards play up front. You know, I mean, I'm a, a I'm like a broken record. I'm, a, I'm an advocate for. I'd love to see Gratzel and, uh, and Kiefer Moore play together. I think they would both complement each other really well. They've done it once this season. We won um, against Barnsley. I'd like to see it again and again and again. And, and th- with the manager being a centre forward himself, I would just like to. I'd, I would just like him to say, "Listen, we're going to go for it today. And if we lose, we lose going for it." You know, because uh, we've just spoke here about. Um, about having a, an attacking philosophy and, and winning more games than we lost, and um, and and the centre forwards enjoying playing together, you know what I mean? And, and it been a it been a joy because not one person was the target man, not one person was the person who had to go out wide. Whereas at minute the structure what I watch is um, obviously Kiefer up front on his own. You've got the two wide, you've got the three the three behind or the one behind and the two sitting. It's for me, it's it's just. It's stubborn Very football stagnant. tactics and, and yeah, but it, it's boring for me. You know what I mean? And, and I mean, let's try something different. You know what I mean? Because out of the ordinary sometimes works. Yeah, there's no imagination to it at all, no creativity, and I think that's where Cardiff really suffer. Um, if this four-two-three-one was doing really well and we were creating loads of chances, then that's one thing. Um, we're not. Um, it's Pep's Pep's fault. Pep's Pep's fault yeah, for yeah, bringing bringing four two four, yeah. formation only four-two-three-one. But but Leo said it earlier that Pep's formation works for Man City because you've got Aguero, Sterling, De Bruyne all these kind of players but when, no disrespect to Cardiff City or Middlesbrough yeah, or anybody yeah, else who plays that formation, they haven't got the personnel to do it so it doesn't work as well Well, I feel like, I feel like I've been a broken record saying you play a formation or tactics to the players you've got in your squad, not what you want to, how you envision, envisage football and then chuck all your players in those positions play in some out of position. You play with what you've got, not what you think you should, if that makes sense. Um, I think that's why we were so successful at Cardiff side because, you know what I mean, we had... Um, I wasn't a winger. Leo's not a winger. You know what I mean? Ernie wasn't a winger. Thorny's not a winger. But we were centre-forwards, so we had we were we had an influx of centre-forwards. Gavin Gordon. So when, when you've got so many centre-forwards, if you only played one, that means six of us would have been on the bench. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not going to happen. So we had to play... We had to, we had to try something out of the ordinary. You know what I mean? We didn't yeah. have... You know what I mean? Jason Bourne was a was a winger. Um, Leggy played wide. You know what I mean? We had a lot of centre midfielders as well. Willie, um, uh, Mark Bonner, um, Carve, Des Hamilton. So we had an influx of centre midfielders as well. So the only way to accommodate everybody was to go four three three because defenders looked after themselves. And um, and for me, yeah. I think the manager got a, manager in the club got um, got a spot mm-hmm. on because they they filled the right holes with the, with the right shapes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a difficult one. I mean, look at Man City. I mean, ultimately, you know, these players are world-class players. So, really, they could play anywhere. So, you know, having a very fancy system is is, is easier when you've got the best players in the world because they can adapt. Yeah. 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 So, I've tried to work through as many of the questions as I can. I'm still uh, still going. I, I apologise to anyone who we don't get to, but I'm working through them. I'm about half hour behind, I think, on some of the questions. But uh, Martin Spate of uh, Black Diamond Sports, of course, says, uh, what's Leo up to now? Second. Uh, right. What are you up well, to now? OK, so, yeah, I, I work nine to five. I work in social services. I go and see uh, all the people, making sure they're OK at home, um, meet lots of different people, thoroughly enjoy it. Um, you know, it, it's very difficult once people start getting older and things they, you know, they they, they struggle with. Um, but yeah, it's just you know, it, it's it's a pleasure. I think working with people is a pleasure anyway. So I'm yeah. quite fortunate. Excellent. Uh, Roger Jones has got a question for Andy, and he says, uh, being a manager of a non any non league uh, club, what are your thoughts on knowing people and how contacts can help? Um, contacts are massive. Um, Obviously, I um, I was quite lucky that uh, when I was manager at, at Norton Stock Nainson, for example, in the northeast, that uh, we had Jason Ainsley on here, uh, who's manager at Spending Moor. So I knew Jason um, from years back. I would ring him up, ask him for advice, uh, ask him for players, um, which he loaned me a couple of players uh, for free, by the way, which he didn't have to. Um, ended up getting a couple of his lads who got released. He'd always give me the heads up. So I was quite lucky with contacts in the area that I could get um, some of the players who wanted to play for me. Um, but then obviously you start to do well and you start to get promoted, but then money starts getting a little bit bigger and people want to get more money. So it's Leo talked about it earlier on about budgets and when budgets are, uh, are cut or when budgets aren't as big as other teams, players get used to earning decent money and wanting decent money. And if they don't have a job and they're 
college or university, for example, it's it becomes even more important. But no, contacts are key, especially non league. You know what I mean? Because you don't have the agents, or you shouldn't have the agents who were uh, at that level. You know what I mean? You're getting mm. players who um, who are playing for the love of the game, and um, and it's just about finding those gems. And if you can find a gem who goes and plays professionally, then brilliant. You know what I mean? Because it, 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 for your reputation, um, hopefully for your club, it might make a little bit of money and it, it could sort football clubs out for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah, 100%, mate. Yeah, I think that's a good shout, that is, mate. Uh, Donna Perry says, uh, which of your promotions did you enjoy the most, Leo? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's very difficult to look past uh, uh, York City. Obviously, the, the, it was the, the the fans came on. It was just swamped with um, with Cardiff fans. Um, yeah, I mean that was a special day, um, made even more special by a, a long journey back to Cardiff. Um, an amazing feeling, uh, it really was. So yeah, I'll say that, that the York City game that was very special. Good shout, good shout. Um, just just give it through some comments. Sorry, um, go on, uh, and you go a minute. I bet the uh, I bet the journey back from York didn't uh, didn't feel as long, Leo, after after a promotion that it did if if you if you'd have got beat. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think as I recall it, we got we got back to Cardiff, um, and there was I think we had two more games to go, and then we went to to Magaluf for a week, and it just just the, the whole you know that whole month was amazing. It really was. It's what you remember though, because it's it's just it's just pure, it's just pure memories, though, isn't it? It's just it's just. And these kind yeah. of things, they stick with you because the games are special because if the, without yeah. the games, you wouldn't get promoted. But then the, it's the moments after what you remember, the days after, the month after. Yeah. It's just absolutely fantastic. Fantastic yeah. memories. Yeah, definitely. Um, Andy's dad says, uh, do you have any regrets from your career, uh, Leo? Um, yeah, I mean, I think probably, and, and Andy will agree with me, I think as footballers, we tend to you know look at the one that got away um, in terms of our successes, um, I, I think now my regret, um, not entirely my fault, is that I turned pro at 23. Um, I look back and think, well, actually, I was good enough at 20, and that was a in that that was a regret because I think when you get into the game at an older age, you're playing catch up. Um, yeah. So yeah, I just think that you know, had, had I been given a chance at 20, I'd have had a longer career and probably played higher, and that's my regret. Great shout! Who is uh, Leo? Who's the best goalkeeper you ever played with? Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, I had a guy called um, Jim Stannard at okay. Gillingham. Uh, he, he played for Fulham as well. Um, it, it's funny. I, I look at some of the Arsenal games when they get kind of bashed around, and you know they've got players with the meter. They just turn it back on the players that's been kind of knocked out. I can remember several games where it's kind of gone off. Uh, in the, the final third, you've got Jim Stannard running from the, the goalkeeping area to get involved uh, for, his team, for his teammate. And I think that's great. I think, you know, so it's, it's, when you're on a pitch, yeah, you've got to have your teammates kind of watching your back, you know, and that was great. Yeah, one and all. Love him to What's the hardest, uh, hardest keeper to play against? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I'll say it's... Um, it, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I can, I'm not sure I can pick one out really. I suppose. Okay. Um, I suppose someone who's big and imposing, maybe uh, someone who likes to leave a foot in. You know, you, you had the, you had the, you had the, you had the keepers who kind of, you know, you went up for uh, a challenge and they, they get their, their studs up. Uh, so that was always difficult. But yeah, no, I mean, I, I was pretty, I was pretty uh, uh, belligerent. So I wasn't really scared of, of many keepers. Okay, and uh, Cage Childs asks an interesting question for both of you. Uh, he says, have either of you ever been asked to go on Soccer AM, which he's not a fan of these days? I'll tell, to- tell you what, it's changed. It's it certainly changed over the years. Um, mm. uh, I was I was asked to go on, um, I think it was about around around 98, 98, 99. Um, and it was just I was, I, as I was getting called in the England squad and I was it was international weekend. I wasn't in the England under 21 squad, but then I did go to the England under 21 squad, so I didn't go there instead. So it was, uh, I was quite... I say quite well. I was obviously pleased because I, I was representing my country, but at the same time, it was I saw that show as quite a uh, quite a negative thing as well. Though you know that it, it looks quite fun when you're watching it, but sometimes when you're involved in that kind of situation and environment, it, it's like that. That sometimes it can it can be 
it can be bad for your reputation and bad for for the way that you're trying to do things. You know that I never really I tried to keep a good reputation when I played, and 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 I still I still try and do that now. And it's for me, it's it's that's key. You know what I mean? And I see shows mm. like that and like a League of Their Own and, and and other things. And you know what I mean? For me, it's not just about banter. You know what I mean? We've, we've talked about Luke Chadwick about about pe- people being um, yeah. disrespectful and and making fun of people, and I I see it on par with that. You know what I mean? It's not mm. football's football's better than that. You know what I mean? Football, football's mm. evolved a little bit, well, quite a lot. You know what I mean? And and for someone like Jimmy Bullard, for example, who I respect and I've always got him with as a player, um, I just think he should know more than anybody that um, that football is is quite a serious thing, and sometimes players need to keep that seriousness as well as the professionalism. Yeah, no, I think totally yeah, I, no, I totally agree. I think sometimes, you know, it's all kind of laughing and joking, but it's going out to, to a mainstream audience who are kind of seeing footballers uh, in a non-football environment for the first time, perhaps. And I think sometimes yeah. it's, it's good. You need to make sure that what you're leaving behind are, are positive images of footballers. Yeah. To, I totally you know, agree. I think, it's, I think it's important, Leo, isn't it? You know what I mean? Because you we work too hard to uh, as 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 a player to to leave down your legacy and to leave you know what I mean to leave that behind because you know what I mean listen we've all made mistakes on the pitch we've 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 been sent off we've done things we shouldn't we've said things we shouldn't we've we've argued back at a supporter who's threw a ball at you you know what I mean but you you realize it's the wrong thing to do you realize that you don't do it again and you and you and you and you apologize and you do the right thing because you're a you're a respectful grown adult you know what I mean and and the relationship we've got now with supporters, we can go back to Cardiff and we, we, we treat like heroes because of the way that we did it. Yeah. That's on the pitch and off the pitch. Whereas footballers now, they've got no reputation. They've got, sorry, they've got no um, rapport with supporters. I, I don't. It's, it's the so distance is scary. You know what yeah, I mean? I, and I'll, and I'll, I'll use the example of uh, the players driving up to uh, in, in the car park. You know what I mean? It's gated off, so there's no. The, you don't have to walk past like we just have to walk over the road to go yeah. into the ground in Indian Park. It's there's no relationship, yeah. and I I feel sorry for the young kids who want autographs. I feel sorry for the for the yeah. people who want photos and who want a conversation and just want to shake your hand because it's players aren't accessible anymore at yeah. all. And, and that's special. I mean, you know, you look at Cardiff and and other teams whereby you know it's a, there's a there's a high possibility that the the fans will actually see their players in and around town or around Cardiff, and that's great. And it's so far removed from the the, the Premiership where they don't see the you know the hills at all. You know, so it's important to, to see players because really, you know, we are we are part of the community, so we need yeah. to be a, a presence in the community as well. Yeah, role model, be a presence is, is key. Yeah, it's absolutely key. Yeah. Um, so I was just going to say what I was going to say. Uh, number one about soccer AM. Um, I used to really like it. Uh, probably five or six years ago, when it was very much focused on uh, kind of music and football and that kind of the links between that. They used to do a lot of stuff like soccer skills and things like this. It was funny and it was like light-hearted funny. Um, I feel like over the last couple of years, it's got a bit away from that and I don't really like some of the stuff and you know maybe I'm not the uh, target audience as a 39 year old man but I don't know it's not what it was um no, but I think that's I think, I think that's key though Sai as well that you know what I mean when you get older you know what I mean you don't find um the things as funny because you're not as immature you know I'm not saying you're immature by the way I'm on about I am. Us, 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 us as a species um, that, yeah. You know what I mean? That, that, uh, I used to, I used to laugh my head off in the change room at the, the childish behaviour. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, you, that you see, you see someone go to the toilet and someone's, someone's made a prank, and I'll, I'll sit there for twenty minutes waiting for someone to come back. You know, what I mean that's how childish I used to be. But I used to find that funny. But if I seen it now, I'd, I'd probably see it as it's a little bit of bullying. You know what I mean? Because that's what it, that's mm. what it is. And and because you, you know what I mean? You you're probably concerned about someone about going home and thinking, oh, I'm getting picked on. And you you don't want people to have those kind of negative thoughts. And it's just you know what I mean? But you you just perceive things when you're younger in such a different way, such a different way. Yeah, hundred percent, mate. Like even like obviously, just this past Sunday, we released the Mel Halpin Sports Show with Luke Chadwick, and he was talking about the abuse that he took in the media and like. <clears throat> What I knew of it, I always assumed it was just kind of they think it's all over. But it actually started in the Belgian media after he was when he was on loan at Royal Antwerp. He scored like a goal, did well. And they kind of referred to his teeth and his appearance in when they were describing him. And it kind of steamrolled from there. And like he said, the shame and the and the embarrassment that he felt like he would just stay in. And like that's such a massive thing. He was 19. Mm-hmm. 
it's, 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 a, it's an easy laugh, isn't it? It's a very easy laugh. And I remember one of the earlier shows, I won't say the name, but, uh, uh, you know, a, a player's hairstyle was ridiculed week in, week out. Mm. And, you know, it, it gets laughs, you know, people laugh at it, but yeah. the damage it does is just awful. Yeah. And that's that's endless. Yeah. And, 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 and these are these are normal people, you know what I mean? We're like, it's like Cy knows a relationship I've got with Luke and, and you know, he's a good friend of mine. And, and I, I just, I, I was... I was shocked with some of the comments that that he was saying, and I was, I was embarrassed. You know what I mean? I was embarrassed listening to it as a as a human being who's probably as a younger player probably probably thought I, I, I'm not saying found it funny at the time, but you know what I mean? You you didn't make a big thing and stick and stick up for him. You know what I mean? Because you probably that you're scared that they're probably going to start on you. You know what I mean? Because that, that's how, how unkind people can be. You know, and I just think it's it's such a shame. You know what I mean? And. And um, and luckily, luckily enough for Luke, he's got skin like a rhino, and he can mm. laugh it off, and 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 he can come out the other side and, and pass his knowledge on to some other people because it's an amazing trait. Yeah, and he's doing a great job of doing that, by the way, as well. Uh, okay, I'm going to select one question from just before, just to finish off. No bias, but I'm going to actually go with a question from Andy's dad because I <laughs> like it. It's a nice, light-hearted way to finish. <laughs> Before we, uh, my dad, yeah. my, my dad, my dad, Leo, right, and I'll, I'll go back about six weeks. My dad, he's, he used to give, he used to give the worst questions ever, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know how, but all of a sudden he came in. He's, he's had a few good weeks, hasn't he? No, he's been right. banging great he's questions right, for, for yeah, weeks, right, weeks right. now. Um, will he spoil it now? Though is the question. Probably. So um, he says, uh, "What's the most money?" you have witnessed being won or lost in a card game on the bus home from a football match? <laughs> well, mine's I've... very easy. Uh, I'm just completely boring. I sat at the front of the coach, uh, didn't didn't get involved in card <laughs> games. Uh, I saw nothing at all. Sorry. No, there you go. What about I you, seen, Andy? I've seen loads. I've seen loads. But the worst, probably the worst one I saw was... Um, uh, was when we were away with the England under twenty ones, and um, to be playing in a, we, we'd have like a big recreational room, um, you know what I mean? So there'd be pool tables, there'd be card tables, there'd be tables just to sit, just a just a lounge, just so you weren't sat in your room, you know? Yeah, I mean, because uh, we were there for about three and a half weeks during the Euros, um, and yeah, there'd be games of cards going on, and I'm on about some big hitters who who moved back in. Uh, what 99 2000 for 10 plus million pounds, and there was, yeah, there was thousands and thousands on the table. And you sit there watching it like it's paper money, or it's you know what I mean? Yeah. Because and 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 then people wonder why it has an effect on people's performance the next day oh, or the God, next yeah. week. I know you know, what I mean? we obviously, Leo, we had uh Keith Gillespie on the show, and size had Keith on uh, mm-hmm. on another show, and and Keith's. I, I love Keith and I love his his, 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 his his outlook on life because he's been there and he's done it and he's wore the T-shirt. But how that doesn't affect you mentally, physically, you know what I mean? His performance because he said how well he played against Barcelona playing for Newcastle after he's lost. He was doing like 35 grand in 20 35 hours. grand the, night, the, night, the day before. It's just, you know what I mean? How, how, you, how you can play at the top of your top of your tree um, yeah. after, after, after think that is just amazing. But yeah. Fantastic. I, I just, I just wonder. I mean, because say, you know, I, I was non-league and semi-professional before I became professional. So I had a, a good, you know, a good five, six years working, you know, normal. So I had that kind of grounding. Uh, yeah. So it didn't really occur to me because I kind of knew, I kind of known the value of a nine to five working and money before I got into football. So I was quite lucky in that way because that kind of I say it schooled me. But I say for, for many for many players, if you've gone from you know youth team through to apprenticeships, and all your all your career has been football, it you kind of you know it, it gets blurred. You know what's reality and what's kind of you know really uh, you know a bit forced. And again, gambling is one of those things. Uh, I'd imagine there's lots of players who have come through the non-league uh, structure who haven't fallen uh, for the same pitfalls as gambling. As those have been in football, you know, all their careers. Yeah, that's an interesting, uh, interesting kind of look at it because uh, Jacob, who does those mental health shows for me, is a mental health support worker with the NHS, and he thinks that um, post COVID, in like a year down the line, he thinks that there's going to be a lot of young footballers, like academy players, and just on the fringes of teams with potentially having gambling addictions because they've been stuck at home, not able to go anywhere. And what's the easiest thing to do? You can go online to all these different gambling sites. You can spend the thousands of pounds, which you're not spending anything on going anywhere. 
So I just yeah. think he's yeah. um, quite concerned by that. He thinks that that potentially in a year, year or so, there could be a, a bit of but an so impact. How many, how many shirt sponsorships are betting companies? Yeah, in the league? that's it. Andy, far too many. Far too many. Yeah, we, yeah. we speculated that Wayne Rooney's move to Derby was probably funded by a betting company, which is on the uh, front of their shirt. And they Wayne Rooney changed his number from ten to what is it, thirty-two. And is it? I can't remember what it is now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, okay. it's uh, it's an interesting one for sure. Um, okay, let's uh, let's wrap us up because. Uh, Leo, uh, Leo, you've been so generous with your time, mate. I really, pleasure. Really, I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed appreciate uh, you answering all those questions we threw at you from the viewers. It's been uh, incredible stuff. Um, guys, subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ace Podcast Nation. Spread the word. Uh, we'll be back on Friday, 7 p.m. with the Championship Show, myself and Andy. We'll be back next Monday with the Andy Campbell Football Show with an all-new guest. Uh, this Sunday, Mental Health and Sport, we have ex-Sunderland and Cardiff City defender Darren Williams joining us, as uh, well as a host of other shows. Um, in the meantime, guys, I'd like to thank Black Diamond Sports, but also uh, Bespoke Financial, who sponsor all the Andy Campbell shows. Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, they are giving away a free will worth £140 with any new policy that's taken out. So uh, please check them out. Give Darren a call. Uh, if you need his contact details, you can get them off myself or Andy. But also, uh, the details are on all the images which we posted on social media over the last couple of days. But uh, I really would like to thank them, Black Diamond Sports, for uh, getting behind the show. And uh, in the meantime, we'll be back later this week with some more shows. And uh, Super Kevin Scripted is back next week. But uh, Andy Campbell, thank you, sir. Oh, I loved it. This has been uh, this has been one of the best. Uh, appreciate all the comments, by the way, all the comments, all the questions. You know, I mean, please come back and watch uh, every week uh, because uh, without your support, this show doesn't really work. It's uh, it's such fun being interactive. interactive. It's, yeah, it's, it's absolutely fabulous. But Leo, uh, thanks for your time, mate. I know obviously oh, you don't nice. do a lot of these I, things, I, mate. Honestly, but... yeah, you know, you, 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 you shut me down, and I've actually loved every second. It's been amazing, and thank you for, to all the questions as well. It's oh, been fun, such mate. an no, enjoyable. Really appreciate it, mate, and uh, and we'll definitely catch up soon, mate. Wait, no uh, wait till all this rubbish in this world uh, goes away. But yeah, it's definitely worth yeah. uh, worth the effort. Um, no as a as a Cardiff City fan, I feel like we should finish with a a duty Ayatollah because no one asked at the end. They usually do. No, no, no so, one uh, did, did yeah. that. So I will ask as the Cardiff as the resident Cardiff City fan if you will both do the Ayatollah to finish us off. I got them. Ready? Oh, 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 are we counting in? Three, got two, it. Three, one, two, one, go. go. There we go. A nice little there screenshot that'll be. There will be. <laughs> so you media screenshot. I'll send you it, Leo. I'll send you it when I get it. No, it's nice. it's okay. Thank you, right. Leo. Absolute legend. Okay, Andy, always legend. Yeah. See you See next you week, boys. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Okay, go. Me and Daddy have been talking about life insurance. It sounds like something to protect my brother and me, but I don't really understand. Then my Auntie Louise told Mummy about Bespoke Financial Teaside. She said they're a local company who helped her with her life insurance. Mummy got in touch and because they're based locally, a man called Darren was able to come to our house. He was really friendly. Darren stayed for a cup of tea and made it all really easy to understand. He said that life insurance will protect our home and family if anything bad were to happen. Like if mummy or daddy got sick, then we'd get enough money to take care of us and our house would be paid for so we wouldn't get taken away. After an hour, Darren said goodbye and Mummy and Daddy seemed a lot happier. Once it was all sorted, we could all relax and watch a film together as a family. I don't know why they didn't do it sooner.